Okay. I think that what I'm going to start off with is uh, I'm going to start off with the P1 who sent me some really funny audio. Now, do you remember when we were talking about save shots? I think this was yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it yesterday we were talking about it? Yeah. And uh, about how in movies it's always so dramatic when they give someone a save shot through the sternum, how they always wake up from their dead drug death with the, <laughs> the eyes go wide open. <laughs> <and> the, <laughs> that right there. Well, P1 Jennifer said that uh, it was so funny listening to the save shot segment because my awaking from death sound is exactly the way she hiccups. <laughs> oh, wow. And she sent me audio proof of this. And I gotta tell you, it's it it has made me laugh so hard. It's kind of like the crazy laughs we've heard this. in the last couple of months. She said, for context in this audio, I'm speaking with my irritated spouse between the throes <laughs> of these hiccups, and uh, it startled her dog. And she sent me a picture of her dog, which is a looks like a Labrador Retriever wearing a ticket yeah, T-shirt. Yeah, a Labrador Retriever, yeah, a and, big big believer. And uh, P1 Coda is the name of the uh, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> that was startled due to the hiccups. So I'm going to try to play you this. This is P1 Jennifer and the way her hiccups sound and the fact that she rolled tape on her having these hiccups. And you can hear her husband in the background getting annoyed with her, <laughs> basically telling her she needs to do something about this. <laughs> like, what can you do when you have hiccups? Jeez, come on. Okay, so uh, here we go. We'll listen to this here. Oh my god. I think I scared Coda a little. I'm going to lose my voice. <laughs> She said, she hiccups and he goes, babe, real annoyed. <laughs> Listen to how annoyed she is with him, too. Yeah. Oh, wait, George laughed over again. we got to be real quiet. Sorry. Yeah. Yes? Can I help you? Yeah. <laughs> You think? You think? (laughs) Can't help it. So annoying. Have have you heard anything like that before? No, that's the weirdest form of hiccups. It's like sneezes. I guess everybody has a different sounding hiccup. You don't think she's? Extending the hiccup by going. <laughs> I think that's part of her hiccup. Wow. She has to do the big intake of air <laughs> right after. <laughs> hiccups are so weird. <laughs> Boy, they are. It's like a donkey. I think my favorite <laughs> segment ever on our show is when Gordo was doing Muse in the News and had the hiccups. And that's what Jennifer talks about in her email. She says your violent hiccup session during Muse in the News a decade ago is saved to my home screen. And it's still the hardest I've ever laughed at a segment. I love it. It was so funny. <laughs> Tyler wasn't on board when we were doing that. I don't know if he remembers that. It is in there somewhere, uh, but it's so long. I mean, we can't play it. Maybe I'll yeah. find a condensed version of it. It's like 10 minutes. You had the hiccups yeah. for 10 minutes, and you'd be in the middle of a serious story, and you'd hiccup <laughs> and go, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't as bad as Jennifer's hiccup. No. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> oh, so we have that. And then at 8.15 today, we're going to tell uh, some really funny stories of what happened to us getting here. Because there was one of the greatest victories in my life that <laughs> that occurred uh, as we were trying to get on the plane to uh, Oxnard. And we'll tell that at 8.15. But... Once we got on the plane, we're sitting on the plane, and Junior, for some reason, chooses my row to sit in. 
to it was not me. your it, row. You didn't own the row. It was my row. It was an exit row aisle seat. And I had made up my mind since George and I were boarding a little late that I was going to take an aisle seat to enjoy the freedom of being able to get up and go to the bathroom without interfering Ew. with anybody to get in the overhead. I just, a little, little, little more leg room. I just... And I really was happy with my choice. I may be an aisle seat guy from now on. See there, I've I've been an, I can do either. I'm yeah. I'm a power versatile. <laughs> I sat on the aisle too yesterday because I knew at some point in our two and a half to three hour flight I was going to have to go pee pee wee wee. Oh, and I didn't want to have to, you know, make two people get up. The flight was full. Yeah. So I sat on the aisle. Yeah, it, it was okay. By the way, that was a little awkward. What? Just having to get up to go to the restroom, there was it. It seemed more difficult to make people leave yesterday to get out of the row. I disturbed two rows of people trying to get in and out of my seat. I'll tell the story at eight fifteen. Uh, but once we sat on the plane, someone comes up with a PA and says, uh, "I just want to call everyone's attention that we have some very special guests on the plane today." And they mention Gordon Keith, George Dunham, Craig Miller. And uh, I, I sense when I said very special people, I immediately perk up because I know, okay. got to be talking about me. I'm going to be mentioning this. <laughs> Radio Radio Superstar. Superstar. It's, it's very through. important that I, I start trying to roll. So I, I quickly grabbed my phone and tried to roll on it. And I got part of their announcement. There's several funny things about this. They basically started doing this right before the, since we were in an exit row, the, the um, flight attendant was about to give us the, You know, you guys are in an exit row. You need to agree to do, you know, a heroic duty in case that we're in an emergency. And so they start the announcement. So you're going to hear the announcement. You're going to hear the absolute lack of response from the plane. It was stunning. It's it's a flight from DFW. (laughs) Were you all expecting a standing ovation? No. 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 Okay. But I was expecting at least one P one to be on the plane and say, "All right, musers or something." I, I would expect I wouldn't expect him to say that, but like do a jub, yeah, or, right, uh, or, yeah, uh, there's no yeah, some some acknowledgement to scream out vaginal slice born born something like oh. that, something tasteful like that. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> it was so crickets in there, which was funnier than if anyone had even said anything. Because you know what's funny is they'll come on and they'll say, hey, it's a uh, gentleman in the fourth row. It's his birthday today. Or somebody, everyone and everybody claps. Birthday. Yeah, that's true. The guy <laughs> at the birthday gets an applause. Whatever announcement they make always gets some applause. Yeah. Yeah. But this one, nothing. Nothing. It was crickets. So then you'll hear uh, the crickets, and then you hear uh, basically her going back into her, her speech and then asking us if we will all help in the event of emergency. <laughs> And I start a controversy there. Oh, Greg and George. <laughs> and they also mentioned Greg. They didn't say Craig. They said Greg. <laughs> oh, Greg and George. <laughs> I right. Right here. They are. Right hey, our, our dispatchers want to give us a uh, let you guys know that they're where you guys are here. They're uh, they're fans. And uh, I guess you guys are going out there for uh, Cowboys training camp. Yep. Yeah. So they're. They're looking forward to hearing you guys' feedback. So. All right. So, if I could have you guys to attend to. You guys have stood in emergency exit rooms in the event of emergency evacuation. You will be responsible for assisting with that evacuation. Just the verbal yes that you're willing to enable. Yes, but I'm not, I'm not confident that he can do it. Oh, Step boy. by eye. I, thought y'all I said just want to register my objection to him being here. <laughs> Stop reaching across. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah, sorry. He's going to have a horrible fight. <laughs> <laughs> that's Craig starting with me because there's a guy sitting in between us. You need to stop reaching across this gentleman right here. <laughs> <laughs> and it always is uncomfortable because people glad are. you had to put up with that. People are hear never it. sure that we know each other whenever we right. start these shenanigans of being getting in conflict with each other. <laughs> One time he stood up to get something out of the overhead. And he went through the row in front of him, which he'll explain at 8.15 why. And as he was getting something out of the overhead, I was, like, giving him a forearm to the stomach. 
And it's if people didn't know, and we acted like we didn't know each other, <laughs> and people must be thinking, what a combative passenger that it's guy just, is. Why? It's just, it wears you out being next to Gordo on a plane. You, and you, then you have to start returning fire like that. <laughs> that I, audio. I've sat next to you before. We've never had this big exchange between someone and that one you're going to get kicked off a plane one day for that for what for making a ruckus about someone not being capable of uh, you're not comfortable with them in the emergency room. i've run that play on giorgio about five times yeah anytime he's sitting in the emergency room ma'am i just can i say something clear i just i do not feel this man is capable of acting uh, in all of our best interests in the event. And that of forces me to say, yes, yeah. I can open it and throw his ass out as the and then, first act. And then he looks like the violent <laughs> man. I'm like, ma'am, I'm really not I, I'm just standing up for people's safety, and this larger gentleman right here is now threatening me, ma'am. Yeah. Let me show you how large. <laughs> I want to talk a little more about the genius who was on the PA, because he had some... I don't know. It felt like he was a character in Arrested Development or right. something. Right, yes. And, and uh, we are looking forward to hearing your feedback. feedback. <laughs> Plains feedback or our feedback from Cowboys Camp? Oh do we gosh. come out here and give feedback or do we report? <laughs> well, we report, yes. And then you decide. But he was funny. and, and, and we're but, gonna, uh, but not as funny as the lack of reaction or response to what he <laughs> said. Very little. And then uh, at 8.15, we're going to tell the story of what uh, the Southwest people, the P1s at Southwest did. That is, to me, one of the great epic troll jobs of all time. What they did. It, <laughs> it was, was great. To cause tension between the Man, musers. It was so great. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Gordo. That's the O-Deck. 632 here on the ticket. Coming up next. This is a longtime tradition of the musers at training camp. We get some help from AI, artificial intelligence, and crack, crank up the GPT Cowboys computer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm been... the big AI chat GPT AI Cowboys computerized computer with today's big AI chat GPT AI Cowboys computerized computer question of the day. But before we get to the big AI chat GPT AI Cowboys computerized computer question of the day, let me offer you the following jocular interlude designed for your human enjoyment. Hey. P1s, why is it, that if you donate a kidney, people love you, but if you donate five kidneys, they call the police, ha 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 hey, P1s, what, do Disney World, and Viagra, have in common, both make you stand erect for over an hour, waiting for a two minute ride, ha 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 P1s, what did Cinderella do when she got to the ball? Wait for it. She gagged. Ha 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 ha. Now let us all move on to today's Cowboys question of the big AI. Chat GPT AI Cowboys computerized computer question of the day. And in today's Cowboys question of the big Cowboys computer question of the day, I say the following, and I quote the following as follows. Quote, good time player man Trevon Diggs signed a big contract extension yesterday. Five years. Ninety-seven million dollars. <laughs> is he worth it? And how bitter is Zach Martin about this whole thing? Please provide your verbal answer orally. And orally only. <laughs> now. <laughs> All right. Eventually got there. Just before we got on the plane to come out here to cover the Dallas Cowboys training camp, we found out some really good news for our ticket team members, and that is that the ticket, Sports Radio 96.7, has been nominated for a Marconi Award for Sports Station of the Year. Fanfare. That's in America. In all of America. Yep. In all of America. So this is basically like the Oscar Awards for radio. Not not nearly as well covered and celebrated <laughs> as the Oscars. No. <laughs> but it is our uh, our industry's version of the Academy Awards. So the it's ticket, quite an honor for our ticket team. And the ticket's the record holder in that category. We've won it four times. Really? No other station has won it four times. And that's Not even our, the fan in New York, nope. which is a historic station? 
And that's our 18th nomination that I hear right on the promo. Wow. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Is that Lord. for all categories or oh, just for be. Sports Station of the Year? Potato. Potato will know. be the answer that he is going with. <laughs> Let's check the board. Is the answer potato? Come on, potato. Come on, potato. It oh, is. that's right. It okay. is. It okay. is correct. I thought we'd get the <laughs> axe out. Yay. Well, <laughs> uh, but in addition to the ticket team in general being nominated for Sports Station of the Year, I also have some super secret audio for the category of what would be the equivalent to Best Actor of the Year, which would be, or Best Actress. Or I guess it's just Best Actor now, right? Didn't they combine it? Have they combined it yet? No, they haven't combined it yet. Okay, Best Actor or Best ac- Actor. I think Actress is a bad term. So, so they call That's what they still here. use it, though. They still use Actress? Yeah. At the Oscars? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Actress in a leading role, actress in a supporting role. Okay. And who cares? The Marconis are bigger. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> they announced uh, these nominees for Best uh, Major Market Personality of the Year. Finalists for Major Market Personality of the Year are... Boomer Esiason and Greg Giannotti. WFAN-FM, New York, New York. Mark Hawkeye Lewis and Michelle Rodriguez. KSCS FM in Dallas Fort Worth, Texas. Jason Pullman, KPLX FM, Dallas Fort Worth, Texas. Lynn Brimmer, WXRT FM in Chicago, Illinois. George Dunham, Greg Miller, Gordon Keith, KTCK AM in Dallas Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah! Whoa! I know those guys. I know those guys. <laughs> yeah, this is huge. I mean, because we have uh it's the applause there. As you hear, fanfare. That to your, I'm trying, I'm trying. And so, um, what we uh, are up against, though, is interesting because Jason Pullman is afternoons on the Wolf, so he is a sister station, and he shares the hallway with us. Yeah. And then you have Hawkeye and Michelle, who not only are are one of our sister stations, but they're as I mentioned in my tweet, they're our thermostat mates. We battle them every morning for <laughs> every control morning. Of the thermostat. Uh, they're right next to us, and they're good buddies of ours. So it was uh, quite, it's quite a list of nominees for Dallas. Yeah. It's and great for the uh, cluster. Great for the cluster. That's what, uh, we call it. Know, that's what we call it. Uh. <laughs> so this is the eighth time we've been nominated in this category. We finally won on our seventh time back in 2021. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think we'd ever be nominated again. I don't think we're going to win this year. Yeah, I don't either because uh, – George, we were wondering about who our non-Dallas Fort Worth competitors were. Uh huh. One of them was Rich. No, not Rich Eisen. Boomer. <laughs> Boomer Sison. Why do you keep trying to put us in with Rich I, Eisen? I don't know. My brain keeps calling Boomer Rich Eisen, which makes <laughs> hey, me rich. Sick. And also Lynn Bremer from Chicago. Yeah. And Lynn Brimmer is going to win this, I feel. No very, doubt. Very strongly. No doubt. I, I'm rooting for, I'm not even rooting for us. I was rooting for Hawkeye and Michelle because I don't think they've ever won, have they? No, this is their third and, straight year to be nominated. And they were up against us two years ago when we won. Right. And so it would be nice if they beat us this time. Why do you think Lynn's winning? Uh, Dateline, January 22nd, 2023. WXRT host Lynn Brimmer dies at the age of 68 of oh. prostate cancer. The beloved Whoa. Chicago radio personality passing oh. away. So, yeah. Okay, well, I take back the fact that I we are, never heard of him when we talked about this at 5.30. We are up against I someone know who, that. who has passed. He will That's terrible. win the award. So if... If we even win, it, even if we win, we will give we will it to dedicate him. it yes. and give it to his yes. his widow. He will win, though, in it, recognition of his incredible career. Yes, yes. it came to an end. So, not only do we have the exciting news that we're up for a Marconi, but we also share the news today that we will lose that Marconi. <laughs> yes, so yes. not funny as we no, should. No, it is not. Not funny. It is most most very serious. So, congratulations to the estate of Lynn Brimmer. That yeah. they can add a Marconi to their estate sale so it's very difficult uh anyway he was uh, very beloved i didn't i didn't know about this guy's career but yeah. as i was reading about him it's uh it was very 
touching to read about his career and how many people loved him and all that sort of thing. Mainstay in Chicago. Okay. But anyway, the ticket nominated and the Musers nominated, so we'll see what happens. We'll see. Yeah. Who's a famous <laughs> actor who won posthumously for Best Actor? Does that ever happen? Heath Ledger? There you go. Okay. So Lynn, Lynn Brimmer is the Heath Ledger of radio. Um, that's not a, that, not yet because he hasn't won. Yeah, correct. Yet. Won it yet. Correct. He likely will. But and we're, we're fine with but, that. But we are. Are we rooting for him? or Are we just okay with it? I, you know, I'm kind of rooting for him. Okay. Yeah. Unless he had won like before. If he had won before, then then we're not rooting for. Then him. we're not rooting for him. Then we're rooting for Hawkeye and Michelle. Well, don't you want him to win another one? Um, Even if he's you won? know what. I think Lynn would want Hawkeye and Michelle to win. So I'm going to know? root you know for what? who Lynn would have rooted for. Maybe Lynn would have wanted us to win. That's a good point. <laughs> that is a good point. So I'm going to root for us out yeah. of respect yes. for Lynn. For Lynn. In yes. deference to Lynn. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. I'm sure his radio show is much better than whatever this has been the last five <laughs> minutes. Than the, the mess and the botching <laughs> of this announcement that we just did. Yeah. Uh, okay, in other news, the Bronny James thing really knocked the world for a loop yesterday, including Craig Miller. I remember Craig being very disturbed when the news of Bronny James broke that yes. Bronny went into cardiac arrest uh, at at USC while practicing, right? LeBron's son. Yes, LeBron's son, Bronny James, went into cardiac arrest. And and I guess his actual name is he's LeBron James Jr., right? I think so. They're just calling Bronny. Well, then I'm going to go with LeBron James went into cardiac arrest yesterday. 18-year-old <laughs> LeBron James. Yes. Um, yeah, and was taken to the hospital, and right now he's in stable condition, no longer in ICU. That's good. This morning. But still, 18 years of age, no. cardiac arrest. It's so scary and so creepy when it happens to a, a high-level athlete, yeah. someone who's trained their body. You know, and I mentioned yesterday, the thing that really disturbed me about this is that I think 30 years ago, he may very well have passed away. Because now all, of the, even born, though. all of the training staffs and all of the arenas have the paddles and they have all of this equipment ready. It's yeah. mandatory in most states. And so they saved him. They acted quickly and they saved him. Mm. Wow. So what causes this in athletes? We've had this... Um, and, it, you know, a lot of people are saying vaccines, but we had this even before vaccines yes. when you would have these soccer players running around out on the pitch mm-hmm. and all of a sudden just keel over, and it's so creepy. Yeah. Heck, we had it in college basketball with Hank Gathers 30 years mm-hmm. ago. Yeah. Sometimes people have a previously undetected heart condition, and maybe that was his case. I, I I don't know yet, but that's a good chance. Last July, USC's Vince... Iwachukwa. Iwa, Iwachukwa. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He suffered cardiac arrest during an informal practice hospitalized for a few days. In December of 2020, a former Florida basketball forward, Kenyatta Johnson, he collapsed after tip-off in a game against Florida State. He uh, missed nearly two full seasons, later diagnosed with athlete's heart. You ever heard of that? I've heard of an enlarged heart. Yeah, it's an increase in cardiac mass, which would be enlarged heart, because of systemic training. Mm -hmm. He was drafted by OKC in the second round of this year's draft. Um, So it's not immediately clear what caused Brawny's cardiac arrest, but they are investigating it right now, and it's good to see that he's out, out of ICU and stable. The Dallas Tipsters who tipped off police about that. Craig, you had this story. Actually, I think it was George that shared the story on the air about the couple that saw the Crime Stoppers billboard. Yes, and uh, I shared that. And then watched this guy, Leonard Neal, board a dart bus. They called 911, and they followed the dart bus and, until cops got there and everything. And then they arrested this dude who was wanted for abducting a couple kids, taking a couple kids. Yep, yeah. And he's been charged with gretchenly abusing at least one of them. And this couple, Brianna and Kenyatta Jordan, um, they are celebrated, right? They're heroes. They turned in this guy. They found this guy, tipped off the police, and the guy was arrested. 
but Crime Stoppers wasn't going to pay them because they didn't call their tip line. They called police first. And I guess the rule is you call into Crime Stoppers and give the tip. And, uh, of course, there was an uproar about it. Some local businesses, I think, even gave them $5,000, uh, if not more than that. Mm. Well, finally, Crime Stoppers says, you know what, we're giving them $5,000. Good. So I guess not the yeah. full 10000 but they're giving them 5000 Okay. Seems like a ridiculous technicality that you have to call the crime. You see the criminal in front of you, mm-hmm. and you aren't supposed to call 911. You have to call the Crime Stoppers call number. Hotline. And as that couple said, if we had had to search for the Crime Stoppers number, which we didn't have, he might have gotten away. So we just called the easy 911. I don't get it. Yeah, Crime Stoppers needs to buy that 911 telephone number. <laughs> <laughs> so it would help them out. But at least there's a, a happy conclusion to that. Dallas-Fort Worth home prices rising zing, zing for a fourth straight month. It's nearing the pandemic peak, prices huh. are. Wow. So that's good. Increase for the fourth consecutive month in May. I guess that's the latest data that we have. Except for our P1s who are trying to buy their first home. I guess that's not a good thing. Yeah, it's always the double-edged sword. You know, people who have high home value and they own their home they're thinking oh we should sell now because we can get the most value for it and then you think oh yeah but then i have to buy in the same market which yeah eats up that profit i saw a chart the other day and i don't know how to feel about these charts that predict where a stock is going to go or in this case home prices Mm -hmm. because i think a lot of times it's a self-fulfilling prophecy hey it's going to hit this and that means it's going to hit this and so everybody buys to the chart or Mm -hmm. sells to the chart but this chart showed that we are potentially nearing a housing bubble burst. Mm-hmm. And it, it was the chart hasn't shown these kind of, uh, you know, ups and Christmas. downs, these kind of Christmases <laughs> since right before the last big housing bubble burst. Uh-huh. Mm. So just beware when you hear these stories about housing prices. I hope they keep going. Was up. that 2008? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got caught holding the bag back then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, skip that one, skip this one, and we'll do... Hey, did you see that Biden's dog has bitten several Secret Service agents? Really? Yeah, his German Shepherd commander. <laughs> I was always scared of German Shepherds yeah, when I was a kid. Yes. I've heard they're really sweet dogs. Yeah. But I was scared to death of him. We had one in our block when I was growing up. Yeah. Always scared of that. His name was Bo. And when Bo would get loose in the neighborhood, every kid was in his front window with <laughs> eyes real wide looking out on the street. Bo's loose. And you'd look across the street and there were the other kids looking back at you from their windows. Because, <laughs> Shaking their heads going. Because word had gotten around that Bo was out. <laughs> there was also a Doberman that we were all scared of in the neighborhood. Whose, whose name was Rebel, and he wore a John Forcade number one jersey from Ole Miss. <laughs> really? Yeah. John Forcade. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dog I fear the most. The Doberman? Yeah. 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 Maybe the Rottweiler. Yeah, I Ooh, fear yeah. Rottweilers more than... No, I think I fear the Pit Bull the most. See, the Pit Bull isn't as big as the Rottweiler. It isn't. Have to be. It isn't, but yeah, the Rottweiler's pretty intimidating. Alligator mouth. So why is it that I fear the German Shepherd, but yet the Belgian Manois, whatever their name is, Belgian Benoit, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Manalois, I don't really fear them as much, and I should, because aren't they used as more guard dogs than even German Shepherds? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't either. I don't know what I'm talking about, which should be the theme of this segment. That should be the catchphrase. <laughs> Here's Gordon. Here's with, Gordon. Keith. I don't know what I'm talking about. Gordon Keith. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> Biden's dogs have bitten several Secret Service agents and sent one to the hospital. Just last week, while walking with Jill Biden, the commander bit an agent on the left thigh. Wow. Would it be weird if the uh, if took out the revolver? <laughs> yeah. If a president's dog. <laughs> Gets taken in by authorities and euthanized for being an aggressive, violent dog. Well, he needs to do something about that dog. Why, man? Oh, God it's just love projecting you. a just tough image, yeah, man. That's all it's doing. It's just protecting. All right, come on. What? Barbenheimer. 
We've had an actual incident in India where Oppenheimer was playing on the screen and the subtitles, because it was in India, I guess they didn't have it dubbed. It was just a subtitled with the Indian language. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was the Barbie movie subtitles <laughs> on the Oppenheimer film. So Ken was talking so about was, the bomb? Yeah, it was real <laughs> Barbenheimer come to life. How funny. Yeah. And then also in India, wait a second, was the first one in India? Yeah. And this other Indian Barbenheimer type story, Florence Pugh, who I love. I love that actress. She was in Jethro Mid- Sister. Midsommar. You ever seen that yet, George? No. Please watch Midsommar. Yeah, nope. you're always promoting that film. Yeah. You gotta watch Is it. Is that a scary it film? Be, no, no, it's a, it's a good. It's no, real good. It's scary. Uh, it's feel terrible. Good. Feel good. Um Anyway, she's in this, and she plays a Communist Party member who has an affair with Oppenheimer. And in the regular version of the film, she's topless as she's conversing with the Oppenheimer character in a hotel room. Well, in India and in several Middle Eastern movie theaters, she's wearing a digital dress. They went in with CGI and put a dress on her as she's sitting there doing that scene rather than the, the one that we get to see, which is the full mommy milk dispensers <laughs> yeah that are on display huh so i want to appear in a film sometime with a digital dress on me on my naked body all right that's my goal in life if i can't win a marconi that that's done. what i want to do all right birthdays today we have uh helen mirren turning 78 she's greatness yeah and isn't she the one that's just like still so very attractive even though I don't think you're supposed uh, to say yes. that. Yes. Are we not supposed to? You're correct People about can't that. can't be attracted? Okay. Uh, Roger Taylor of Queen is 74. Gary Sharon of Extreme and Van Halen is 62. He sang that more than words, right? Nothing I have found Nothing wrong with that song. You. Sandra Bullock, 59. Jeremy Piven, 58. Jason Statham, 56. By the way, Jeremy Piven always creep you out. Yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to him? I don't know. Wasn't he on uh, Band of Entourage or whatever that show was? <laughs> Long time ago. Chris Harrison, um, uh, uh, formerly of Ticket the Zone. Bachelor, is 52 and Ticket Zone. Kate Beckinsale is 50. Wow, I, I tried my 50? I tried my Riz on her one time. <laughs> How'd that work? <laughs> Came way empty-handed. <laughs> Contemporary Christian singer Rebecca St. James, 46. Taylor Momsen of The Pretty Reckless is 30. Dorothy Hamill is 67. And in today's Wowie, which is which one would you? You got your choice between an, a 64-year-old and an 80-year-old. Okay, I'm going to take the 64-year-old because that's roughly the age range of you two. I hate your creepy reasoning. <laughs> Greek. Because I can clearly see what you're hoping to happen oh. here. All right. That leaves George making love to Mick Jagger. Oh, 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 oh. He's one of your faves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we also have, turning 64 today, Craig, you'll be fighting off the hands of Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I lost. <laughs> There's no winning. Congrats, George. You won. There's no winning and losing. Kevin That's Spacey. <laughs> That's why we don't do it anymore. <laughs> He's about to be sentenced. I yeah, think. I know. You'll have to do it in prison. You have to visit him. Have to get a conjugal visit in prison to claim your prize. Uh, but... Damn it! That ruined my day. All right, thanks. That's me. Joining us now, our first official. Guests at oh, training this is camp. Exciting. Oh, yes, I can't you guys wait to can talk give up your what? headsets. I, we have because, plenty of headsets. No, we don't Why have enough we? microphones uh, right now, and yeah. these guys are anxious to talk to us. Longtime NFL veterans, they're now retired. The Skinlanen brothers. Put it on. Between them, 29 Super Bowl rings. We say good morning to the longtime deep snapper and the older brother, Nick Skinlanen. Hi, Craig. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having us on. And A lot of energy. Longtime punter and holder. And younger brother Rick Skinlonen. Hi, Greg. Hi, Rick. Hi. Welcome to training camp. Yeah, well, thanks for having us. You We're guys very are here, excited. here for the NFL Network. NFL Is that Network. Right? Now, we are not 
on camera anymore because yeah. Roger Goodell made it very clear that we're not friendly to the eye. Yeah, that was his <laughs> quote. So we work in now the audio division yeah. of the NFL Network. Huh. We're we, in the uh, podcast world now. Yeah, we've taken over Michael Irvin's podcast that he was doing. <laughs> okay, not, I guess. Not sure why he vacated yeah. it, but. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but. When we, um, when we took it over, the numbers really plummeted. I mean, they, <laughs> they went from like 30,000 subscribers to one. Oh, uh, who's and the one? I think that's well, our mommy. Yeah, the one subscriber has our mommy's email address, so I think we can geofence that address pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. And, well, uh, that yeah. can't make Roger Goodell happy. No, well, he's not no. happy. And our and our guest dropped out this week. Ronnie was supposed to show up, but he never did. <laughs> well, and, uh, he had a medical. Well, episode. yeah, we found out, and we wish him well. But he he was oh. our first real sports right. guest, and but, now he didn't show. So we understand <laughs> why. But now it hurts because. Now it's back to beat writers and ex-athletes selling hair restoration. So <laughs> we're getting yeah. feeding there. We've got David Moore, who's actually going to talk about both of those topics today. Yeah, that's right. Our, but, um, wow, okay. We, and we're taking the podcast in a different direction. We're doing all, all the NFL camps, all oh. 32. All wow, 32, okay. Yeah. Starting here in uh-huh. Oxnard. Great. Working our way. Uh, we're going to Spartanburg, South Carolina to be with the Panthers. St. John Fisher University in Rochester, New York, the Bills. <laughs> <laughs> and at every camp, we're going to give you, every day, the snaps at camps. Yeah. The, the best deep snaps of the day. Broken okay. down by us. Broken down. Not only how they're snapped, but like today, how Brian Anger catches them as a punter or a holder. Okay. Yeah. Very yeah. important. And not only do we break down all the snaps, but then we'll talk about the community reaction to the snap. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you're focusing on your specialty, yeah. so that's great. Focusing, that's a, yeah. That's what you do at training camp. You break everything down. It's about technique. It's about the process, as Jason Garrett always used to talk about. You yes. may remember that. You and all played for him. Yeah. And we did. He hated us. Yeah, but totally. anyway, it's about the process, and we hope to show that with snaps at camps. Uh, by the way, camps. I love the title. Yeah, thank I, you. Thanks, Greg. I, I'll be your second subscriber. Oh, good. Oh, thank good. you. Has, thank any, you. has Roger Goodell or anybody wondered about no. the uh, your voices? Yeah. You know, because uh, it it is the audio medium. Has he has he said any anything? With, well, what? I don't. It's getting awkward. What are you talking, what are you about? talking about? I, never mind. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> da, 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 da. That was a weird moment. <laughs> I don't know what you where you're going. What enough of that, dude? Hey, I understand you guys are up for an award. Yes, the Musers Mar- were Mar- not yeah. for major market personality of the year. Congratulations! Thank you. Thank you know, you. we just got nominated for a pretty big little award too. Really? Yeah, I uh, I have the the text here it says, "Dear Rick S, we want to inform you that you're eligible for a nomination." For the Oxnard Chamber of Commerce Award for Most Improved Micro Business with Marginal Local Ties, <laughs> please send your $1,000 entry B, and then it then it lists an address, and, and I won't read the address on the air. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable sharing it over the air yeah. for privacy reasons. <laughs> sure. That's, that's, that's smart their business. Yeah, I, I probably shouldn't have read the whole tag. So but, nice to be nominated, though. Yeah, yeah it's, congrats. It's, so it's nice to relate. be nominated. That's great. We can so, relate to what you're going through. Yeah, we can totally Marconi. relate. To the excitement <laughs> yeah. that you feel. Maybe we'll all be winners. Yeah, maybe we'll all be winners. That would be great. Uh, well, we got to keep going. Yeah, yeah. we got to keep going. Nick's having a, a procedure done a little Ma'am? bit later on. <laughs> What's going on? You're, sounds like you both need procedures. Yeah, his, his cholesterol is pretty high right now. <laughs> so he's gonna, having a procedure for that? Yeah, they're going to install an external blood filtering machine to <laughs> try to get some of the gravy out of his blood. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, right. Best of luck. I hope that doesn't 
pr- proved to be a hindrance on your training yeah, camp tour. Yeah, same well, here. It probably means this will be the last visit. Yeah, so. well, who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? And, hey, if you, sell, if you see LVE around here, tell him we've been looking for him. Okay. Yeah, he's been he's ducking a, us. He's, he's a, been ducking us. Okay, well, he's about to be here in just a couple oh, really? of minutes. Oh, really? So. Cool. Oh, Maybe yeah. Get the ground. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy your day here in Oxnard. Hey, thanks, Greg. See you all. There thanks, they go. Greg. Thanks, Greg. Nick and Rick Skinlonen, the Skinlonen brothers. There yes. they go. Late. All right. So P1s who were tuned in at 8.15 heard uh, more details about how I completely big-timed George and Craig thanks to our good P1s at Southwest Airlines because Craig, who checked us in, checks him and George in so they get boarding B- B7 and B8 positions, and I was B51. I didn't do that on purpose. Which was so rude of Craig to do that to We're me. always together. And even back when we were in school, they used to call our names together, even though we weren't alphabetically in order. And so <laughs> Southwest rectified the situation when I hear my name paged over the PA system as they were boarding our plane and during pre-board. So you had uh, all what George calls the wheelchair people That's that were getting on the them. plane. I didn't call them They that. page me, and I go up there, and she goes, oh, you're pre-board. This must be your lucky day. Someone must really love you. And she took my boarding pass, scanned it, and said, go on in. Meanwhile, Number there were still one. two other wheelchair people back behind me. I personally one. witnessed you shoving a wheelchair person out no, of the way. that's not true. That's not true. It was a one wheelchair person and then his accompanying, I guess it was his wife or somebody. But as we got in the jetway, as I reported to you, I did let them go ahead of me. Did you tweet that picture? The I didn't tweet Courage. the picture because I feel weird about it, the creep shot that I took of them. But I will show it to you <laughs> okay. guys, and then I'll let you all decide whether I should tweet the picture. All right. So here is the uh, – you can see there's the woman who was with him, and then there is the uh, airline employee who was pushing his chair, and then here he is in the chair in front of me. This is staged. This is, how is this yeah. staged? I hired oh. actors. Fake. Yes. To do this. <laughs> Very Nathan for you move. You hired actors. <laughs> Just so I could go ahead of one wheelchair person. Yes. Uh, but prove to you that I didn't. Fake I'm on you. you. So, yeah, and I not only let them go ahead of me, but as he passed by me in the wheelchair, I touched his shoulder. And you see the results of that touch here in this picture. You see him standing and getting out of the wheelchair to walk into the plane. <laughs> Jeez. So God. I allowed some of my broadcasting healing powers to work you really on, this, so. on this gentleman. So should I tweet this, or is it too creepy to do that to this it's a little creepy. fine yeah. old couple that, they, they don't want that doesn't to do with social media? That's what I'm saying, too. So let me delete that. All right. Craig, good news for you. I saw this. I'm very excited. <laughs> yes. Uh, we played Wowie today at the end of Muse in the News, which is which one would you? I wow. give you two uh, birthdays. Like a, And today we had an 80-year-old and a 64-year-old, yeah. I believe. And, Craig, you chose the 64-year-old. It's. I like it. It's a fun game for me because I can't wait to see if I chose correctly or not. And today I lost. Yeah, today because you lost. I was I was thinking it was a member of U2's birthday, and it ended up being Kevin Spacey yeah. that I got. And, and George, you won because you got Mick Jagger, who's one of your favorites. Didn't win, and that's the thing that I think kills me the we, most about this. We've got to move on because we got the, the we're up dead, against the time yeah, that, I thought was dead, that I thought was dead uh, 20 years ago. So is that it's always a big birthday. It's always like someone who's important to us, like Mick Jagger Yes. Or Bono or somebody like that. That's what's and it gets great about wasted it. on stupid wowie. No, this is another thing. Just but you can still insane. talk about Mick Jagger after it's revealed. I don't want to. After I after wowie, I don't want to. I'm too defeated. God, you're really pissed. Look at him. You're going to start a spite show on this exact station that runs in I the right might. speaker <laughs> while we're in the left speaker. <laughs> I just might. <laughs> okay, so Kevin Spacey had a birthday today. And we also find out now that Kevin Spacey has been cleared of sex assault charges in Britain. He found hmm. out today on his 64th birthday. He cried in the court when they announced that he was uh, found not guilty of these allegations. In Britain. In Britain. Yes, in Britain. What about here? Ah! He doesn't face any charges. Yeah, either. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on here legally with him, but... He was uh, accused of touching four victims' genitals and Botox 
over their clothing between 2005 and 2013. Uh, mm-hmm. Most of that was during his time as artistic director at the Old Vic Theater there in Britain. 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 Hmm. Britain, which is an important country for a lot that goes on. Um. He said in, I guess, testimony that he had, uh, or maybe this was the news conference afterwards. Would you try to focus? Uh, that he had lost everything. I mean, think about it. Is he employed anymore? True. And he spent millions of dollars in in defense. Yeah. In his various trials. Mm. If he's innocent, that is a travesty that mm-hmm. that has happened to him. But if he's guilty, then. That's then what he happens. made his bed. Yes. And in this case, at least in these trials, he's innocent. Uh, yes, he was found not, not guilty. Was this not guilty or was this a civil thing? I, can't, I think this is a criminal thing, right? Yeah. But, but, yeah, he's still up on charges here, I believe. Is he? I think so. Hmm. I think he is, too. You know. Uh-oh. I'm Be just careful. saying. But I'm just saying. Okay. So that, that protects you're me. Saying, you're fine. Yeah. Under the just you're saying laws of America. Just saying. I'm protected. Strongly protected. I And, you know, there's rumors, right? There's always a whisper network that goes on. Sure. And you got to take it with a grain of salt because every celebrity is going to have chatter about them, right? Yeah. And not all of it's true. I had heard that he was a little creepy. That he was a little aggressive. He was aggressive in hitting on people. We heard that firsthand. Yes, we heard that firsthand yeah. from someone who had experienced it. And I've always been uh, creeped out by him on screen. Now, it wasn't what he did to this person who told us firsthand. It wasn't criminal or anything right. like that. It was just aggressively hitting on someone. Mm-hmm. So that's what we heard. And if Kevin Spacey's lawyers have a problem with that, I think that the person that told me, my good friend, is a complete liar, and I can't believe that they passed on that to me. <laughs> if they have a problem with that statement that Gordon just made, email tom.gribble at gmail.com. <laughs> uh, but it, Kevin Spacey found not guilty, so Craig is celebrating today. It made my wowie loss a little better. Yes, it did. Okay. Earlier today, we played this at 6.15, and we've been giggling about it, and I wanted to at least give it uh, a little bit more uh, airtime because it's so funny. It was a good P1 of ours, Jennifer, who says that she has, when she hiccups, she has them like me doing the save shot play playlet that we've done on the ticket recently. And I'll be darned if she wasn't exactly right. When she hiccups, she sounds like she's getting the save shot so in the movie. Loud. Yeah. And she sent us audio of the last time. I don't know if this is the last time she had hiccups when she recorded this. But you can hear her her spouse getting annoyed with her that she has this saying, you need to do something about that. And then she's smart alecky, alecky back to him. And it just makes me uncomfortable. that I want them to get along. <laughs> and they're not in this clip due to her hiccups. Gosh. <laughs> Jolting. I think I scared Coda a little. That's the dog. I'm going to lose my voice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Can I help you? (laughs) (laughs) You think? (laughs) I've never heard somebody do that before. Okay, so is he being the big jerk here, or is she being the big jerk for, uh, I mean, if he's, like, working in the other room and needs that, can she move somewhere, or maybe she's at her computer having to work? I just don't think that's necessary that she hiccup like that. (laughs) People can't control their hiccups. (laughs) 
I couldn't when I was doing Muse in the News. So, by the way, Tyler found about two minutes of that. Do you want to hear it? This is this is my favorite Muse in the News ever. I think which it had is. nothing to do with my content. It had to right. do with me hurting. It was That's just. Correct. It was so funny. You I'm starting a third spite show <laughs> is going to go up against your show and Georgia's spite show because I had, nobody had ever heard a news anchor the get the hiccups shows. and then try to fight through it and deliver the news. Okay, listen. The word disgrace is harsh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Are you okay? Oh, no. Well, I got hiccups. Oh, <laughs> it's You're driving me nuts. Me. Don't don't you hate the hiccups that last like two hours? Mm-hmm. Boo. That scare him out of us. Oh gosh! Worse than that. I, I'm assuming he said some more things after he said the, some other stuff. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! And in Newt's explanation for why he resigned, that he wasn't getting the result. <laughs> Does Rich need to take over? Can you do this? Can he? Please, can I? Please, please. In, please. No, turn off his mic. Please let me. Oh, a hiccup in Gordon is about 40 times greater than just regular Rich. Is it? (laughs) Uh, it, Gingrich's explanation that you quit if you're not getting the results that you want, that's a good lesson for the president? Just a president that resigns (laughs) in the middle of his term just because he didn't get some legislation passed, so F it. Can't believe you've been drinking this early in the morning. (laughs) I don't know what... I don't know why I have the hiccups right now. <laughs> Hold your breath. I tried that. Like, right before... Put your arms above your head. <laughs> oh! Get upside down. All right. Hold your arms. There you go. <laughs> that went on for ten minutes. Are you sure we were on the air? We seemed pretty low energy yeah. there. <laughs> Nobody hiccups like... <laughs> <laughs> I do, sir. <laughs> I'm hiccup divergent, so... Yes, I'm sorry. So My apologies. I require you to kneel and My salute apologies. and do <laughs> what else? All at the same I'll do it all. I'll do it all at the same time to show that you're very <laughs> subservient to me right I'll now. I'll do it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then finally, an athlete in trouble, DJ Hernandez. You know who he is? DJ Moose Hernandez. No, he's the <laughs> older brother of Aaron Hernandez. Oh. Well, he is behind bars after a woman close to him told police that she was worried he was planning a school shooting. Whoa. Oh, my. Dennis Hernandez, former player at UConn, he was shocked with a stun gun and arrested by police back on July 18th after he threatened to kill officers who had gone to his home in Bristol, Connecticut. And he emerged from the house yelling, shoot me, shoot me. God, those Hernandez kids. On the way to the hospital, um... Who Hernandez, who went by DJ while playing quarterback. It's an odd interruption of a <laughs> sentence that starts with on the way to the hospital. He told, uh, I guess, the personnel there that he, quote, planned to kill anyone who had profited off his younger brother. And he also had, uh, I guess, said that he, quote, has a bullet for everyone. Wow. And then... He posted threats on social media towards one of the women who I think had turned him in. And one of those read in part, quote, Will I kill? Absolutely. (laughs) And uh, he said that he has been dying for years and that, quote, Now it's other people's turn. God. Didn't they have a very traumatic childhood? There was I I didn't watch that. That documentary on Aaron. Yeah. I didn't there's either. something to that. But that's what I understand is that there may have been a. Because Aaron Hernandez was. Did he have some stuff that was done to him as a kid? I think so. Uh. So, yeah, this is not not looking well for that, uh. that family there. Wow. Uh, so, athlete and tro- former athlete. He's no longer. Terroristic an threats. What's the punishment for that? I don't know. I mean, it, how long can you keep him detained? He also had, uh, I guess, posted on social media, not all shootings are bad, I'm realizing. But I think that he had planned to go, it was UConn's campus in stores. Yeah. You know where that is? Mm-hmm. And the Brown University 
campus in Providence, Rhode Island, wow. that he was Man. targeting. So, yeah, very disturbing. And if he played football and everything, didn't they find that Aaron Hernandez had the brain CTE? Yeah. Did they mm-hmm. die, Did they do his brain? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. You know what I mean. Cut it yeah. up yeah. and gotcha. look for yep. mites mm-hmm. or whatever causes it. Yep. All right. All right, then. Thank you. <laughs> you go. That's the corner. I guess. <laughs> Support me in my yeah. broadcast. We efforts. are. We broadcast. are. That was a great corner. Get the steak podcast at patreon.com slash sports Greek. Well, look at this. A snake in the birdhouse. Well, a corgi, actually. Oh, hey, yay. <laughs> no, you said my name. <laughs> He enunciated too clearly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Hello, Sean. Hello, Donovan. Snake. That's DJ Blake. Snake. Hello, Corby. Tyler. What are How you doing, doing here? Hello. Uh, I just to let you know, I do this every week at the same time, eleven thirty. So, of course. Yeah. What's this called? You're typically in a meeting um, when this is going on, I think. But uh, yeah, welcome. It's the, called the Birdhouse or the X House. And we you just read tweets. I. That, that's it. Blake. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Trying to get caught up here. You know, reset the bit. <laughs> Don't hurt his feelings before he starts. I'm ask- I was just asking. Uh huh. All right. He curates all of the tweets. I do curate. Then just them. tell Thank me that. Each. Thank you. Then just say it. If you just retweets, maybe so on just- a t-shirt of mine. <laughs> yeah. Coming up real soon. You just walk in here and you just retweets. That's yeah, it. Huh? Kind of do. Great. That's really about it. Oh, Blake. Sweet. Uh, if you, this is from Stephen. If you guaranteed the Rangers winning the World Series three years in a row, would you live without electricity and running water for one year? No. Nope. Sorry. What about one or the other? Could you live without electricity for a year? No. 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 Could you do it for a week? Yes. Did any of you I guys do it, do it during the storm? Oh, yes. Uh, I lived up here for like four days during the storm while my family was at my mother-in-law's house. Smart. God, how glorious was that? There was good and bad. <laughs> I mean, people were dying. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, not Sean. I mean, I didn't shower for four days, so that mm, was a downside. Ew. You didn't even take a horse bath up here? I mean, yeah. Kind of scrub kinda, around? Kinda, put it in the sink? Yeah, just flop it up <laughs> Kind of boil it in the sink like a hot dog? Put it in the sink. <laughs> Get the hot water going. <laughs> oh, it's getting plump. Four days. Yeah. I don't think I've ever gone that long without taking a shower. Never. No. I can't. When you were younger? No. I definitely have. Not as an adult, but as a kid, for sure. I hated showers. And you know what? Now that's come back to haunt uh, me. How are the boys now? Terrible. My <laughs> oldest one is 17 now. He's good. Yeah, but he I mean, has to wash. Yeah, but to I mean, impress the he ladies. understands stench. He does. But the young one, he doesn't When did you care. transfer to showers, though? From baths? Yeah. Probably six. Yeah. Six years old? Yeah. Hmm, Were you still like, bathing is it in like oh, yeah. at elementary yeah, at school? Co- in, at Commerce, yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no. <laughs> were you a big ducky? dog in school? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that Donovan was taking Wait, a bath. Wait, you were I'm bathing? To, like tr- your mommy would walk in and say, are you in the bathtub? No, you can do it yourself. Do I got to yeah, rinse your hair for you with the, <laughs> some the extra bath. bubbles? Yeah. I mean, but she would run it for you, right? No. I ran it for myself. Make sure the temperature was good. She wouldn't draw you. So in the morning, before school, you would take a bath. Yes, really. Give me the the drop dead age where that's now. (laughs) I probably started taking showers maybe sophomore year in high school. Whoa, whoa! I think so. That is way late. You work with that guy. I was I was clean. It's a bath. What's wrong with that? That's all well and good. You. Are the weirdest person I've ever met. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Sophomore year. I think it was Mommy. just. Mommy. Okay. You could run your own bath. No, water. you can't. Yes, you can. Mommy. Baths. You are, can clean. Baths the, are meant for little babies. You can clean the tub. Every little toy you can battleship. run it. Even if you wanted a, a little submarine. a little dawn in there for extra bubbles, you could put that in there also. This You're, is going to be a great camp round table because I guarantee you. I was You're not the oldest a man, probably so, in the history of mankind to bathe, unless you were like in the old west, <laughs> you, just in the silver tub with the yes. with my knees hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> your bathroom habits scare me. You got to get naked. To There's go some trauma two. there hang that on, he hasn't on. revealed. I'm still getting clean though. I don't understand. Like There's if I wanted to take a bath right sure. now, I still don't see anything wrong with that. 
We just didn't take showers in my house. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh. Did you have a shower? shower? I th- yeah, I think so. Okay. You had a- but we never used it. We never used it as a family. What about Pop? Oh, you don't supposed to do it together? I mean, no, I'm, I'm saying no one took a shower in my house. Your dad didn't take a shower I will bet you that my dad bathes to this very day. Just recycle the same water, oh. whole family? No. <laughs> I don't want to hear from you, well like water over like there. Like you're, go- you're going to the extreme. <laughs> like it wasn't, she wasn't running my bath water after nine. You can do it yourself. But we just never took showers. But you just liked the way that she did it. Yeah. You did, didn't you? No. That's why you didn't stop. Okay. (laughs) Mommy, dinner's over. I want a bath. Right. I can't reach my back, Mom. (laughs) Can't get this spot. Yeah. Help. Little dino nuggets are in the toaster. (laughs) You've already hit puberty. Yeah, you're 24. (laughs) Come home for your bath. All right. Do you still bathe? No. You don't? I can't remember the last time I took a bath. But you know what? Since you jackasses keep talking, I'm Mm -hmm. taking one tomorrow. This is from Jason. If you could know your complete... That'll show us. Yeah. <laughs> That'll show you. Huh? If you could know your complete future, but it meant you completely forget your past, Oh, would you do it? No. Nah. I need the, the past. The past is great. You need the bank. What other stories am I going to tell? Bank. What? Not, the bank that's is... That's what you're... You're not... Because you need a bank? The bank. <laughs> that's why you want the past? Sometimes. In a pinch? <laughs> that's interesting. You know nothing about your past. You know nothing no. about your childhood, your parents. No, that's, that's terrible. Yeah. Your friends. Oh, uh, but it is a, a clean What's the wife sli- situation, though? Oh, yeah. You, you, she comes home and you're like, who are you? Yeah, what happened? God. Now, if that's the case, let's let's talk. <laughs> Definitely could do better than this. <laughs> You kind of look at... Because you don't know what you look like either. You look in the mirror and you're like, Oh, what's up? Hey, hey. How you doing? And then she walks hey, in the door no. and you're like, Go! Oh! <laughs> you don't remember the first thing you look. It's kind of... <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. See. <laughs> damn it. Is that it? Damn, it's not true. But no. I don't know. I don't know what's <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. I have no it's clue. True. <laughs> you have no idea. I don't know anything. Right. Uh, no, we need the past memory. The memories are great. Donovan, that, huh? would, would you give up going to Vegas so you can't go ever again? Okay. For a Dallas championship Grand Slam. So in one year, all four win, but you can never go to Vegas again. Oh, I could live with that. Sure. You would take that? Yeah, I've been 30 times. I've done it. God, that would be so badass. The sweep. It'll never happen. Like, unimaginable. What's the closest? Has anybody done three? <sighs> I'm going to say no. Boston. Boston. Boston Without Adirondack. doing the research, I'll say no. No one's done three or four? Boston's Probably. definitely done two. Probably. I mean, a bunch of cities have done two. Yeah. A bunch. Name them. I don't know. I'm just saying that. Well, don't, don't throw it out there saying a bunch have done it if you can't name Look, them. Look, you bathing bitch. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Jeez. <laughs> What up, bitch? See what you miss in your little meetings, little fun time meetings? Yeah, cute little meetings. <laughs> uh, okay, this is a good one. If you could go back in time and experience one video game again Ooh. for the first time, what would it be Ooh. and why? Video games. <laughs> I think this is a question for the rest of the crew, because I don't know if Donnie ever... Did you ever play video games on the reg? Did you have Atari? Of course. Yeah. It's bad. Nintendo and yeah. television, okay. all that. Yeah. Not all that. What am I, 90? I, mean, I don't know, My dude. norm here? <laughs> we never talked video games. Well, I, which... Before I took my bath, I would play video <laughs> games. Well, let's go to Blake first because you're big into video games. What would you go back as for the first time and be like, oh, God, it's so great. Man. Um, probably just the nostalgia of like playing Madden like back in the day. Like That was really fun play with your dad and it was all new to you ncaa football back in college that was good. that with the boys that was yeah madden was sucks great. now um, does it really oh yeah i keep hearing that it's bad yeah <laughs> i uh i thought frogger was the best thing i'd ever seen when i first played frogger yeah that's how yeah. i go way back <laughs> I haven't, I haven't played video games in a long time. I think the first time I played Donkey Kong at an arcade, I was so blown away by it. I know Galaga was great when you first saw it. Dude, Galaga's yeah. still great. Defender was great when you first saw it. I was a Defender. closet fan. Multiplication tables. 
I was a closet fan of Joust. I'm Math Man. <laughs> How's that a closet fan? I was a fan of Joust. You love Joust? Stuff. Yeah. Joust was cool. What um, were the animals? Were they ostrich? Ostrich. Yeah, I was going to say pelicans. Then Burger Time was great. These are all arcade games. Like, the arcade was a bigger factor in y'all's life than I think. Oh, it my was, God, you, dude. Talking about getting dropped off. We caught yes. the tail end of Aladdin's Castle and Tilts oh, and places like that. Just at the mall of Redbird. It was Orange Julius on the other side of the arcade, so you can go get something to eat or drink. And Wonderful. then when you go to the arcade and... Five dollars a year. That's there it. All and day that was long. the standard for every kid. Yeah. Five, Five dollars, and you spend it all at the arcade. And you but get you, your quarters. Put the quarter on a machine if you yeah. need to be next. But there was a pacing mechanism too, because you were there for a couple hours, right. and some people would just blow through it all. You would have to so watch have to other walk, people. Yeah, you would walk around. Yeah, we had a place in Arlington called Wizards on Bowen and. Um, Park Row, I think, mm-hmm. that was specifically like the first arcade Arlington ever had, and it was so magical. So what game were you best at? Donkey Kong. Okay, you played that well. What about you, Blake? What's your best video game? Um, I don't know. I was really good at Madden. I got pretty good at Halo when I was in high school. I could stay on Street Fighter 2 for a long time at the arcade back in the day. I was never very good at a lot of them, but I, I was okay at Miss Pac Man, and that would attract all the eyeballs around when you're at those mm-hmm. different stages, and the little energizing thing will go really fast, but you're still just moving around and you're all into it. That kind of made you feel like you were a big dog. That seems in school. In school, <laughs> that seems like a game. Were you a big dog in school? <laughs> that seems like a game for a bather, Miss Pac Man. Gosh, a real quality bather. <laughs> okay, you have to drive from New York. To L.A. by yourself with no navigation assistance, meaning no map, no phone, no GPS, no nothing. You just go. And he says you have to make it 96 hours. How long does it take to get there if you did have all that? A couple days at least, right? You're having to drive through the night. Minimum, yeah. Can you arrive in time? Can't you just go west? Like, would you know where west was? Yeah, because I know what the sun is. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That yeah. Helps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that helps a lot. <laughs> New York to L.A., 41 hours. Yeah. Okay, but 100% you, you could make it. But you have no navigation. <laughs> right, you just keep going west. You make What if little, the road just stops? There's interstate. You just stay on interstates, you'll make which it. Which one? You don't know. They tell you which way you're going. Yeah, there's signs that what, say, hey, okay, this way. But maybe he's saying you can't, there, there are no signs. Like it's... um. The Last of Us, or something like that, where you're they're just... Trying, they're trying to make it to Oregon, or yeah, 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 wherever yeah. the hell they're going. Yeah, you're just Montana. going in a certain direction, and yeah, you're fine. I still think you can do it. I can't. I, I'd have to stop and bathe somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> a bathhouse along the way. What animal did you always want to be as a kid? I don't think I ever wanted to be an animal as a kid, but a bear seemed pretty badass. Lion seems pretty cool. Yeah. The thing about lying, though, there's a lot of killing and stuff. And yeah, but you do it. Yeah, but a lot of, like, blood. And then... And a bear is just kind of eating fruit and stuff. The lady does all the work, and you get all the credit. Do bear- they kill? I don't know. I just made that up. It sounded good, though. I think I the know. lionesses hunt. Yeah. Yeah. You get to sit back, kind of scratch yourself, just roar. That would and be And then when cool. she comes back with the food, you eat it. And then you get you some. You've got a very basic understanding of animals, Donovan. I don't think any of that is true. <laughs> and then you get you some. Yeah. I think being a big bird I think bird they prey, only get them some when it's not like a weekly thing. They do it when nature nah. intends for them oh. to. Nah, you just walk up, sniff, <laughs> pounce. I don't Again, know. You have a- Wouldn't life be better if you could do that? Yeah. Walk up, sniff, pounce. Yeah. That's what they do. Right. It's kind of called. There's no buying drinks. Rape. There's no. Forcible rape. No, I'm not. It's going to be played in a courtroom There's at no some respect. point in the future. <laughs> we always knew that Mr. Lewis. I mean, I always wanted to be a big bird of prey so I could just like go anywhere I wanted. That is flying is yes. pretty badass. Yes. Hawk, yeah. eagle. Sure. But how long do they live? How long does an eagle live? Eh, a couple decades, right? You don't know. You just threw that out there. Well, we what? had the eagles that lived in. Uh, the lake here in Dallas. Mm. White Rock. White Rock, yeah. Bachman. Lake Ray Hubbard. Eagle life span. <laughs> what was that, Blake? 
20 to 30 years. See? Two decades. Boom. It's not a long time. Yeah, uh, but I mean, but you get to fly everywhere. A dog is 12 years. Oh, okay, let's get bear lifespan. 20 to 30 years. Mm-hmm. Look at the lion. 70. For real? I don't know. I just made that up. <laughs> I don't like I made up everything else. Well, they're cats, so <laughs> let's see. Oh, my God. Septuagenarian lion. Male lion, 8 to 10 years. Oh. Dude, <laughs> that would suck. You better get a lot of pouncing in. Yeah, you've only and plus you got to wait till after your bathing days to do it. So it's like you wait like two years before you do it. I'm out. All right, there you go. Hey. There's All right. reading tweets. <laughs> Where to go? And if you would like to participate, tweet at Corby Davidson. Right. Well, next week. Okay. Yeah. Let's just reset the bit. All right. <sighs> Man. For those that don't know what you're doing. He's so into formatics. He is. So All funny. right. All right. Huh? So sometimes as the point guard of this segment, I know when to pass the ball. Okay? Sports. Okay. Ham brought up something to me in the break that he is just dying to get in on the news. I hate you. Ham explained what happened. I asked him if he saw what's going on with Mitch McConnell. And the answer in there? No. Okay. So apparently, Mitch McConnell, the minority speaker, or I guess he's the majority speaker in the Senate, is having his weekly press conference and then just stops talking for about 45 seconds and is just staring ahead. And then he's escorted away, but then he comes back out maybe minutes later. And everything was fine. Finish up? Yeah. Anyone say what was wrong? What was happening? Nobody said anything. He's the minority leader right now. In the Senate? Yeah. The oh, House. yeah, because, yeah. Blank bin. Maybe he just needed to collect his thoughts. Possibly. He does look like a turtle. The video There's is... There's no getting around it. Is it tense, the video? It's really weird. He's just standing there, just staring in space. It's a catatonic yeah. state. And I asked, you know... The point guard, if this would be in the news. <laughs> and he didn't respond. And you know, it's funny how that 45 seconds seems like forever. But another 45 seconds is really quick. You okay? Here's the video. Oh, shot. I don't get the are you okay anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Oh, that yeah, is... Like, everybody's waiting. You have reporters. That is very creepy. And he's just... It's a lot of maneuvering going around, on around him also. And no one's e- not even really catching on as... Oh, this looks like yeah, just this a is, loop. Yeah, this is a okay. loop of it. But. Uh, <laughs> say, that's really weird looking. <laughs> Maybe he went number like two it. in his pants. And he's like sitting there going, oh my gosh, how am I going to get out of this? How am I going to get out of this? And they would get him out, clean himself up, came back out. He's good to go. Why? Why is that the... Blank why did you go to that? Oh, yeah. How'd you arrive at that? Yeah, I don't that, know. I mean... I'm just trying to think of why you would immediately stop and just be like... But he, he, <laughs> but he's he was, wearing a dark suit with the jacket, so even if there was some sort of issue like that, the jacket probably covers maybe, up the stain. He was so violent in his mind. But he walked back out and the jacket was wrapped around his waist. <laughs> exactly, <Yeah>. see? <laughs> so he was, you know he was taking mood. care of that. <laughs> but he was only gone for like a minute and came right back, right? There's no way that's enough well, he had time some to, of the, to he, clean that ass up. He had some baby wipes back not there. A, no, and... not a minute. <laughs> At his age? But he's not no, doing that's, it himself. That's it. That's he's got it. a team of people doing it. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, he's, he's got like interns. He's got, he's he's got, got his a boxing NASCAR corner. pit crew. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then just windshield wiper blades are right there. They're rubbing kinda, Vaseline all over right his face. And ready to go. <laughs> no, Let's go. There's right. not a <laughs> chance. <laughs> Someone that age, it only takes a minute to clean up. I don't care who, how many people are there. Way longer than that. Yeah. I think that's, the White House pit crew can nah, do it. That's yeah. not, that's, it's the best of the best. That's not solid. So that's uh, Mitch McConnell and what's going on in Mitch McConnell. Mm, there's our, there's our political news. Today. You just threw it to your reporter who's out on the scene. Yes. Yeah. Okay, then I love it. Now we're about to, go to talk about the bottom pit crew. We're about to do another one. <laughs> Sean, who died? <sighs> Sinead O'Connor. Oh. Dead at 56. See, now you're an anchor. I told, you're not I told just you, a reporter of the news. You're the anchor right now. It comes better from someone in the know because Ham mm. knows a lot about politics. Do you think Does I know he? what the minority something Meh. or whatever is? No. I had another thought about what that led. So I go to the reporter on scene. I don't know who this person is. So I'm you don't know who Sinead O'Connor is? Why don't really? you tell me? 
Wow. It's okay. not that surprising. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Should I have not passed you the ball? Well, she's a singer. I know exactly she's who she is. I'm surprised you don't know who you. she is. What does she sing? Nothing, nothing compares, compares to you. That was her big hit oh. in 1990. <laughs> she was on Arsenio Hall, and she was making a big Arsenio. statement. Arsenio? <laughs> Keep going. Sorry. Don't let from Don't speech. let the hecklers. Uh, yeah. She rips up a picture you. of the Pope. That was like a big deal. It was mocked on SNL. Hey. She had a shaved head, which was weird. We talked about that a lot as as children because the and MTV was like I don't know nothing compares to you every every hour probably they played it a it lot. Huge. But Blake is not an MTV baby. That's true. I, there, I think it comes to a point but, in an age where a name probably doesn't resonate, and I think Sinead O'Connor is right there. I'm not going to chastise you for not she knowing. She has been O'Connor. wheels off for a few decades now. She's had her issues. She's been in and out of the news. She's dealt with mental health, and her 17 year old son sadly passed away 18 months ago. I didn't even hear. I didn't hear about that. Huh, I guess you don't listen to E News like I do. Whoa! Whoa. Yeah. Ooh. Checkmate. Wow. <laughs> Take me to Parkland. No, but that burn. <laughs> <laughs> now I guess I. No, I didn't know. Again, I mean, it's sad that she's passed. Sure. Maybe I'll listen to Nothing Compares to You, which is a Prince song. The Prince version. Oh man, I That's like not her. honoring her. I liked her yes, version. It was. it was good. It was okay. Overhyped. It's been seven hours and fifteen days. Oh, yo, you yeah, you loved it. You loved it, huh? It. Now I got it. <laughs> there you, you go. Play, play Prince's version and then Sinead O'Connor's, and then you'll see okay. that Prince is way superior. But to the family. Condolences. Condolences, Condolences okay. indeed. I don't want to see anyone pass. How old was Sinead O'Connor? 56. Hmm. That's it, huh? Rest in power. Yes. All right, we're going to watch one more video here in the 130 News. <laughs> uh, because have you guys seen the crane collapse from this morning? Oh, yes. my goodness. Yes. 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 That is. That was terrifying. That's movie esque. And this happened in Hell's Kitchen, but I, it's on fire. And then it, as the crane part, the arm falls, it takes some of the building down with it and comes crashes down, comes crashing down. This happened at about 7.30 this morning. Whew, boy, that is... Very 9-11 vibes to it, too, with that video. And just yeah. think if you're in the building across the street. Maybe you're in your office, having a nice cappuccino, getting ready for work, and then the crane from across the street bust the window out in your office that is do you get the rest of the day off i always picture that as soon as the window is busted like all the papers start flying out of the window (laughs) and you have to hold on to the desk as your feet is flying you're not in an airplane i'm just saying that's what i always think that's what happens it's not like an airlock it happens in the movies all the time i mean you're like 40 stories (laughs) up i don't know if that's gonna what if the wind's blowing pretty pretty hard out (laughs) and it's hitting the other side of the building but you're Crane. The papers are going out, and you're trying to hold on. I love the image you're giving. Yes. Yes. Thank you. What's your not, leg doing? That? I, yeah. I, I wouldn't have known what you were talking about. Because it's blowing about. in the wind, uh, It's like you're a dog trying to <laughs> the leg get is the last couple the drops wind. out. The leg is blowing you're in the wind. You're trying to mark Sean as your territory. <laughs> Sean's finish. your fire hydrant. I'm excited to see Sean like my dog did to <laughs> <Sure>. me. <laughs> kind of excited peeing Next all you know you'll be drinking out of a red Solo cup. Oh, I'll take that now. The crane was carrying 16 tons of concrete. Oh, throw it to your other reporter oh. on the scene. Oh, on the scene in yeah. Hell's Kitchen. Here's Sean Bass. <laughs> Reading details, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sean at the podium. <laughs> I'm just going to like take 45 seconds yeah, off and soil myself. Number two yourself. <laughs> Only six people were hurt. Oh, on the ground? Uh, let's see. Building workers who were outside the building and then a couple firefighters. So all in all, it looked it looked very scary. Yes. Oh, man. All people running down the street. It what does have that. Uh, I feel like if I'm at a safe distance, I probably wouldn't run if I saw what happened. Now, if I just hear some crashing and I haven't Crank. turned around to see, yeah, I'm out that bitch. <laughs> I'm running as fast as I possibly can. Could you imagine the panic up here, though, if a crane hit this building? I mean, we're all running for the stairs, I would imagine. I don't know. Fire alarms go off and we don't move. Yeah, but like those, that happens all know. the time. I know. It's like, well, okay. Yeah. Well, it could happen this morning. A crane hits your work building once every eight years or so. <laughs> yeah, then the arm just falls to the ground. There are people scattering. 
Yeah, it's, I, it's, I love it's them. Scary, on the sidewalk. They feel like they're really far away, but they are getting the hell out of Dodge. Six injured. That feels kind of low for something right. very low. That's that's good. You don't think if a crane hits cat, cat hit cat's office right there, he's not holding on for dear life like he has. He has his hands on the Marconi Awards and he's trying to. <laughs> Uh, pictures of my family, Marconi's, one of my takers. Uh, his sandwich goes flying. Uh, <laughs> my sandwich fell apart. <laughs> my sandwich pop, just fell apart. The healthy popcorn is going all over. The, the grapes are everywhere. And he has to hold the Marconi or he's going to fly out of the window. Because everything they're anchored down, around. of course. Right, they're anchored yeah. down. They're, you, can't, you can't take those Marconi's anywhere. <laughs> Hey, that was a fun news, guys. Yay. Thanks, Yay. Thanks, Thanks, Ham. Once again, the ticket presents Why Today Doesn't Suck. And George Dunham has a birthday today. Yeah. Let's go around the horn. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday yeah. to you. And now, here are your hosts. Yeah. And God, don't bog. <laughs> All right, it's 256. Ham. Yeah. Donovan, back to you. Thank you, Ham. Yeah. The hard line is not here, so that only means one thing. They're there. Hard line, do you read me? We have you. Hello, hello. Corby, oh. Bob, Davey. Corby, Bob. Hello. The we, hard line. Welcome we, back, Donnie. Thank you. How was Jamaica? Oh, so great. So Jamaica, so much weed. Did you get a tan? Uh, you may have to take diversity training because you asked me that. So. Oh my god! Whoa. He learned how to roll Come joints on. with one hand. Took joint rolling classes. I did, which is offered at the resort. That's pretty awesome. No, no, it's off off property. Whatever. It was in the wild. I use I use cones. I don't need to learn how to roll. Right. Well, we are at Happiest Hour, right across the street from you guys. Oh, if you would yeah. If you'd like to come over afterwards I will. and have an after-show drink, mm-hmm. then we will be right here. Mm-hmm. And Bob and I found out. We walked, and it took us. my car. Well, he's spoiling the cold oh, open. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. We'll do the cold open. Here. Boy, oh, build, that's a tease. <laughs> build suspense that for the cold open. Their chemistry it. never been better. Could two it. afternoon <laughs> hard talk show host for the next 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> Could they walk across the street without getting all sweaty? Find out. Today is Wedness Day, July 22nd, the 207th day of 2023. There are 158 days uh, left in July the year. July 26th. What did I say? Seven. Oh. Sorry. What is ni- it? It's the twenty sixth. Why in did ni- you say anything? Why did you say different? Power, I don't know. Power through, Corby. I don't know. In nineteen and eighty six. Oh, way to go! Yeah, that's dumb. Snake. God, don't bog. In nineteen eighty six, two of bog. the ring's most promising we young heavyweights. Line four guy. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> Two of the ring show for the P (laughs) one. We're trying, (laughs) obviously. Are you on delay? He may be. Two of the ring's most promising young heavyweights squared off is one Mike Tyson, who was twenty four and 22 KOs, fought Marvis Frazier. Ah, yes. Now that was Joe's kid. Yes. All right. Ninety one seconds. Uh, Was it thirty? No. The 10 round bout. Michael Spinks was 91. Oh, okay. 30. Boxing fans. I'm they're a not, Michaels mixed up. They're not all the same guy, Donovan. Today is the 22nd. Now, I don't know if uh, Marvis I Frazier ever fought again. Boxing. As a matter of fact, all those guys that he knocked out that we thought were like all awesome, I don't know if there was anyone worth a damn that he Marvis beat up. fought three more times. Okay. I don't like you saying that because then you cheapen his entire you legacy. You really are. Well, we kind of know you that it wasn't that great. What? It was that what great. What are you saying? A little That's... overblown. Until okay. prison got him. You're ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, until rape got him. Yeah. I like to look at it that way, Bob. Okay, and that's fine. Rape! I would say as a boxer, he was He's all right. great Please. until... Corby doesn't know what he's talking about. Hot Some out-of-the-ring opinions. Bad decisions, Coach. Yeah. In 2013, Ariel Castro, who sounds like a middle infielder for the Rangers. going to say. The man who imprisoned three women in his Cleveland home, subjected them to decades of rapes and beatings, pleaded guilty to 
137 counts <laughs> in a deal to avoid the death penalty. He oh. later committed suicide in prison. Because of the mm. rape. That's a deal? I know. No, he... because it was because the prison was in Cleveland. Yeah. In 2015, Shin Su Chu of the Texas Rangers became the first Korean player to do what? what? To homer three times in a game. Come on, baseball people. Hit for the cycle. Twice. <laughs> in the same game. Uh, uh, uh. Sean, you truly are diamond Whoa. Talk. He hit for the cycle. Did he have six fingers? No. No, no Blake. Blake. Who was our fat catcher that hit for the cycle? Benji, Benji Molina. Bimo. He did it after him? He, he's more hefty Korean, than fat. Bob, I yeah. said Korean. Benji Molina oh. was yeah. not Korean. Yeah. See, I thought he was. He wasn't? He married <laughs> a synchronized <laughs> swimmer. Know, T- he they, was un-Korean. He was. I thought all Molinos were Korean. All right. I'm hey, sorry. Bimo. I this is from Ann. Have you ever seen a fat Korean? Mm. Starting his set. There you go. Right. You know what? The new cold open. Tom no, Kim, Dave. the noted golfer Tom Kim, is a little pudgy. I think he's Korean. Could he's, be wrong. He's a friend. Tom Kim? Yeah, we shared a knowing nod. Or oh. Kim Tom. At Trinity Forest. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. look who went to Trinity yeah. Forest, huh? Yeah. Oh. oh. And we were shared an Uncrustable. Uh, we we cheered. Kind of laid in a tramp, that thing? <laughs> With two Uncrustables. You we toasted made. them? Yes. Uh, and thank you, Corby and team, for continuing the birthday request. You bet. I was not sure to send this to you, so I included many. My husband looks forward to these every year. Whee! Happy birthday to my husband, P1 Robert. Guess what, Robert? We're going to Vegas for your birthday. Pack those bags. Your loving wife, Ann. All right. How about Congrats. that? Good work, Ann. Better bring that chicken wings home tonight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> long, 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 long. Yeah, man. What a nice thing. I think that's a very nice thing. Very, very nice thing. Can you imagine if Donovan was receiving a surprise trip to Vegas? I can't imagine. What? Why not? How excited you are. Oh, okay. I would What's do next? Wobble. Are we going to start doing gender reveals on Why Today Does It Suck? Oh, here's the new guy. I mean, it, it is his birthday. Ooh. 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 Dialing up the we, heat. we just revealed the gift. What's wrong yeah. with that? Right, a, a gift. Uh, Corby, please wish our amazing and loud friend. It's a boy! <laughs> he has blue hair! <laughs> My <laughs> shot. <laughs> oh, hey. Him? Please wish oh, our blue. amazing and loud friend, <laughs> Wendy Peppercorn, a happy birthday today. All right. Happy birthday, Wendy. Wendy Peffercorn. That sounds like... From Sandlot? Sandlot? Yep. Yeah. Uh, her leaders are me and George. Being a Red Raider herself, her drop request is Bucky the Obnoxious Tech Fan. Is that the Go Raiders guy? Is that Bucky? Oh. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I don't know, man. Uh, all right. As we continue here with why today doesn't suck, live from happiest hour. Birthdays oh, boy, today. What a tease! What a, re- what a reset! Man. <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah. Such a company man. Sound. See what I had to do? I had to shift over from the actual uh, script that Blake gave me to my emails, and then back over. And so it just took a little time. Multitasking. Took a back- time. Yeah. Not as easy That's as a great it looks, story, dude. Former Cowboy, I'm going to kick your ass, Donovan, so hard. I can't (laughs) I'd like to see you try. I'm going (laughs) to. So you'll reset a segment that happens every day, but not the birdhouse that happens once a week. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) Former Cowboy Bob Lilly is 84. Bullet Bob Lilly. I believe he's known as. I don't think that's his nickname, (laughs) Davey. Mr. Cowboy. Sam. Big day for Sam Madison. Maybe all Bobs Sam. are authorized Sam. to be called Bullet Bob, yeah. and I just didn't know. Former Cowboy Lyle Collins is 30. It fits for you, Bob. Uh, Throzilla. <laughs> Do you think I don't it fits for me? this world, but it's part of mine. I wonder if Throatzilla sends him like a an invoice every birthday. <laughs> I think she yeah requests Whoa. Venmo every every right. year. <laughs> Wasn't Lyle the one that had the uh, the weed gas mask? No. You're thinking of Larry Mitonzo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now Lyle did we he we his draft stock fell much like Laramie Tunsil. 
Laramie's because of the weed mask the night of the draft, the night before the draft. Lyell, because his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, was killed. Because of murder. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Former Cowboy Keanu Neal is 28. Former Cowboy Xavier Woods is 28. Does Keanu Neal seem older than 28? Yeah, yeah. Florida zone? Believe Florida so. Gator? Yeah. And, uh... Part of that memorable 2020 Mike Nolan defense, right? Yeah. Mm. Or no, was he? Huh? Or was he brought in with Quinn? No, now I'm starting Quinn, to second guess. Quinn brought him in and put him at linebacker. There uh-huh. you go, 2021. Football Blake. Mm-hmm. Football Blake is a formidable football man. Well, Football Blake, you're going to have to shift here because former Maverick mm. Delonte West is 40. Mm. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Charlie Reds. Has anybody been over to the Home Depot? Is anybody kind of surprised he made it to 40? Oh, happy birthday. Jeez. Is, <laughs> it, is it confirmed? confirmed? He's still alive, right? <laughs> Man, I have to I try to find the uh, 635. I did a one-on-one with him. <laughs> yeah. When? <laughs> when he was playing with the Mavericks. I really don't remember what year. You remember that, Bob? It was 1989, when, right? I think I put him on the uh, Papa Do's hot plate or something. When he was in the parking garage? No, when he was playing with the team. <laughs> Went over out to practice one time and interviewed him. That's Yes, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was an awesome day, and uh, thank you for knowing that. Okay, Bully Bob. <laughs> Do you yeah, think LeBron's mom regrets that one? Yeah. That's probably one of her lower moments, if in fact it happened. Former Ranger Joaquin Benoit is 46. Ah. Uh, they believe he has seven toes. I love his balls. Bowflex. Former no, Dallas it's Star. Chris Benoit. <laughs> Former Dallas Star Jordy Ben is 36. Oh, yeah. Hockey. Hey, Jamie. He's hey, low Jamie. energy, Ben. Happy birthday, Jordy. Oh, uh, hey, guys. Hey. I guess I'll call you later tonight. <laughs> oh, Dorothy <laughs> Hamill. Yeah, how do you, how do you think a, a phone call between those two will go? Yeah, how's it going? Oh, hey. Yeah, hey, no, Jordy. Good. How hey, you been? Oh, yeah. You fall asleep? Yeah. Oh, you been up to? Oh, oh, man. I'm actually in the next damn. room. We could just talk over. <laughs> this takes a lot of energy, though. Oh, uh, yeah. Just let me lay down. You want to go get, a, wanna go get he, a beer? You just car. woke up. Do you, like, you, you feel like you have Tim COVID Hortons or anything? I just have to gather my strength for a second here. You know <laughs> Dorothy Hamlin, her haircut is 67. I would say... Dorothy <laughs> Hamlin, the uh, Bills No, that's back. DeMar, who's just yeah. a clone. All right. Uh, <laughs> Bring it back besides the balls. Jennifer Aniston haircut, maybe Dorothy Hamill had the most influential women's hairdo of the last 50 years. I can't believe that came out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a drop? I don't know if that no, was no, no, that was real. That was, that was real. <laughs> and I'm, I kind of agree with him. I kind of do, too. What? What are you doing? You just have a running catalog right. of influential the hair. The last can we, 50 years. Can we hear your top five? the top five? Yeah. Where's the Rachel and all this? I just said, besides Jennifer Aniston, okay, it's one. Who else? Okay, two is Dorothy Hamill. What's three? Marge Simpson. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't go beyond two. Now, Mary, Mary Lou Retton was big. Peg yeah. Bundy. Mary Lou Retton was the same as Dorothy Hamill. Carpet. No, no. Carpeted Dorothy Drake Hamill had match. the butt cut. No. What did Mary Lou Retton have? She just had, like, real short The hair. Bob. The bullet, Everything's Bob? about yeah. Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Me, then, uh, me. What about Farrah? Obviously. Ah, I'll give her. What fair. about Suzanne Summers? No, don't give her credit. Sandra Day O'Connor. Uh, actually, the Sandra Farrah. Day O'Connor. O'Connor. Sinead, Sinead O'Connor. O'Connor. What about oh, Sinead? yeah, her. Yeah. yeah. Sinbad O'Connor. Let Let hold on. Let hold on. on. Uh, Ham? Uncle Fester. Tell me you didn't get those two confused. One just died, right? Just now. <laughs> Just the, now. Uh, the other one is Sandra Day O'Connor. <laughs> what about Ruth Bader Ginsburg? <laughs> uh, actor Helen Mirren is 78. And oh, yeah. yes. Do you Would. think female Supreme Court justices set hair trends? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Helen While Mirren, singing, the nothing compares narrator to you. of Barbie. Narrator of Barbie. And, um, guys, I'm going to have to leave. Oh. But I wanted to tee you up beforehand. Because I love you. Today is the 80th birthday. And you tell me, is he in better shape than Jerry Jones? Mick Jagger is 80 oh, years old today. No. Bingo. Oh, wow. A true bingo. 
I mean, you're allowed you to play that. Taxis. Matter of fact, today, Ham, all stones. Oh, my gosh. You know, it is it is worth pointing out. Let's as see. If they're Corby in my just backyard. Did, but I, I want to reiterate for emphasis so that everyone's paying attention. Would you walk out the back door, Donovan, and Setting watch stage, the Rolling, and rolling Stones in rolling your backyard? Stones are playing in my backyard. Just I'm, waiting on a friend. I've already uh, finished picking up the poop, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I turn on the sprinklers. <laughs> Mick Jagger and mail. Jerry Jones are the same. Oh, right. Mick Jagger, oh, who will go out and play three-hour concerts on the regular, dancing and moving the entire time, is the same age as that that Arkansas glom Whoa. of Jerry Jones. What do you think? He sounded fine yesterday. Yeah, he was lucid. Yeah, he was great. What do you think Mick Jagger was doing <laughs> when Jerry was protesting integration? Okay. Uh, Probably having sex with a black chick. With a black chick. <laughs> yeah. Good uh, lord. Uh, 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 Brown uh, sugar, Donovan. Brown, Brown sugar. Uh, I you taste of the Rock musician Roger Taylor of Queef is seventy four. Okay. Queen. I think that's the proper name. <laughs> killer Queef was their original name. Yeah. <laughs> She's a killer. Queef. 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 Actor Kevin Spacey, my dear friend, oh, is hey, sixty-four. Corby. Hey, do you Whoa. think that would change their dynamic if that was, you know, that one letter changes in their name? Would like, they be as popular? Would you have gone with your wife, Donovan, to see the Queef <laughs> tribute <laughs> band <laughs> play Queef all instrumentals? Orchestra. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. All the Queef candles lit, right? Actress Sandra, or uh, actor Sandra what? Bullock is fifty nine. All right. I had high regards for her for a long time. She still looks good. Yeah. And you turned on her? Uh no, just haven't seen her in a while. Actor Jeremy Piven oh, that from old side. school. Yeah, Blindside. I think she was at her best. That was Wagon what? Wednesday on that. Yeah. Jeremy mm-hmm. Piven from old school is fifty eight, and Excuse Jeremy me, Piven blind. who hung a oh. hooker on a hook. What? Whoa. What? In a movie. Hey. Oh, oh. What? yeah. Well, I mean, I saw it on TV. I didn't know if it was a documentary no, or not. No, it was, it was in a movie. What was it called? Very Bad Things? Yeah, I think so. Smash. Yeah, when he was having <laughs> relations with a hooker in a Vegas bathroom, and her <laughs> head got caught on the <laughs> towel rack, oh, and then she just hung there. The, the towel hook. He, towel hook, yeah. And he yeah, kept yeah. going? Well, you should well, have. He, he didn't was, know. He wasn't immediately aware. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know. Oh, uh, well, you know. Actor Jason Statham is 56. Greatness. She just hung there after his dismount. And he was like, what? Oh. Yeah. Jason Statham, greatness. Uh, really good in, like, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. But later on, and, and The Meg. Let's he was in Field of Dreams. He was Moonlight Graham. Yeah, and he was in <laughs> Snatch, too. And was the lead in Snatch. Yeah. He was good in that. He was, but then he was the number the lead, one Snatch. But he then he had to do, you know, Expendables snatch. and probably Fast and the Furious and crap the, like that. The Meg, too. He, Soon in theaters. You're damn right. Even Snatch. bigger. He went to go play in Saudi Arabia at the end of his career for the cash. He did. But he did. Let's not lose sight Snatch of the good news. The Hardline Zone, Snatch. Chris Harrison, is 52. Speaking of a guy who has got his feet up probably and just enjoying the ocean air. What'd they pay him to to go away? Like $25 million or man, something? I thought it was twice that. It may have been. Uh, rock musician Dan Kanopka of OK Go is 51. Aren't they the ones that have the cool videos? Yeah, they always have the real yeah, on videos. The, Stuff falling like down. It's white people and Donnie. Goldberg machines. Yeah. Don't be confused. Yeah, okay. and where they're, or where they're all on the, uh, like, uh, Stairmaster. So are yeah, they Trenton. opening for the stones in my backyard? <laughs> yeah, OK Go. <laughs> Actor Kate Beckinsale is 50. Nice piece. Mm, mm, Hot. Mm, 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 Born mm, on this day, now dead. Hoyt Wilhelm. No, he's a pitcher. And scream. What if Parliament Funkadelic is back there, Darren? Oh, Donovan? yeah. No, we don't turn the sprinklers on on them. Well, they'd be late showing up to the stage because, you know. <laughs> George. Because George. what? Because why? Well, because. George Clinton is. George is notorious late. for being late. Hmm. CPT? Hmm. What are you humming about? You know that as a fact. We oh, went and no. saw him, and he was like two hours late. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. CPT? Yeah, I don't know what that means. Is that some sort of a life-saving maneuver or something? CPR. Yes. 
Yeah, oh. it's, like, it's like CPR, but not. <laughs> yeah, you know me. The patriarch of the Jackson family, <laughs> no. Joe, <laughs> no, dead Bob. on this day. <laughs> <laughs> do you think Joe did bad things? Yeah. Yes, he what did. What do you think? Yeah. I'm just wondering if he had any impact on the way Michael turned out. How did he bro- turn out? A bro- successful musician? Uh, no, it was a raper of children. Oh, okay, that, that no. part of it. Okay. Raper! Okay. Golly, jeez. Stanley, the great Stanley Kubrick, dead on this day, still dead. Mm. Hmm. Oh, Bob. Yes, sir. James Best of the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> Roscoe P. Coltrane. Boy. Big wiener. Dead, I don't yeah. know, Ty. Dead on this day, still know, dead. In 1863, Sam Houston, probably weird. killed by Santa Ana or one of them. <laughs> Very weird claim, Sam. Ty. One, one of them what? That's what I heard. One of them guys that fought for the other side. Called it Flash. <laughs> you can see him on 45 on he the way to not Houston. call it Flash. That's uh, the long time. In 1980, Alan Hoskins died. He was Farina on The Little Rascals. Um, in 1984, George Gallup died. He invented the Gallup poll at the age of 82. Oh, Bye. my God. Line four guy. Hang on, Ham. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask people who they think will be elected president. Oh, but I'm going to name it after myself. On this day in 1990, oh, what a fresh idea. the keyboardist for the Grateful Dead, Brent oh. Midland, checked out from a speedball, cocaine and heroin, at the age of 38. Replaced by? Uh, uh, God. Martin Gore? Four. No. Uh, Vince Wellnick. No, it wasn't. Re- what? No, it wasn't. Rachel Starr. Yeah, Rachel Starr. <laughs> Bobby Christina Brown, Three, dead on Alexis this day, still oh. dead. Miss Cleo Donovan, who died on this day. Okay. The psychic. And Rocky, uh, the June Foray, the voice of Rocky the Flying Squirrel, died at the age of 99 on this day in 2017. And that is Ooh. why today doesn't show up. Broadcasting live I-L-4-G. on the D-E-A-T-H. D-E-A-T-H. <laughs> what does that spell? Death, 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 death. Trifecta time here at the happiest hour at 419. Where we must say goodbye to someone who has left this world behind recently. And uh, today is actually that day. Yeah, it's rare that we do trifecta. Every Wednesday we do trifecta at this very time. But typically we have a couple of people kind of stocked up in the freezer, you know? Yes. That are waiting. Uh, Very rarely do we bump somebody up above people in the queue. And I don't even know if this particular person deserves it. Boy. But it happened like an hour before the show. And her name does resonate with our age group. Yes. Right? Absolutely. This, to me, this one was a no-brainer to move up in the order. Okay. Although I don't know who she passed. Well... I don't know if you moved past somebody of... Uh, of great import? Like uh, Lamar Hoyt might have got passed. Lamar Hoyt? <laughs> the 83 Cy Young winner. God. Or Bam Bam Bigelow. <laughs> we are speaking of the death of noted Irish crooner... Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor, who had a really, really rough post-30 life, checks out at the age of 56, cause of death yet to be revealed. Family released a statement saying, it's with great sadness that we announce the passing of our beloved Sinead. Her family and friends are devastated and have requested privacy at this very difficult time. Now, I don't need to ask Ty this, Die, 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 die. And I know EA's answer to this, but Matt Birmingham, what do you know about Sinead O'Connor? She shares a similar name with Sandra Day O'Connor. <laughs> Back to you. I mean, he's right. By the way, I believe she is leapfrogging Tony Bennett. Oh, we wow. We haven't put Tony in, have mm. we? Way to go, Bob. Okay, look. This is all Bob like, we've got to do yeah, it right now. No, no, let's not. You don't understand. Bob that, Sturm. That, that might have been a bad call on your part. <laughs> but we'll get to Tony. Oh, yeah, we'll get to Tony. He's been dying for years. <laughs> <laughs> we were more prepared for his death than we were for Sinead. Right. 
So Sinead O'Connor burst onto the scene musically. Uh, she had a really rough childhood and adulthood, as I said. Her, ch- her parents split up when she was a kid. Her mother abused her. Um, and she started getting into music as a release to get away from her parents, basically, and her mom. And she released her first record in 1987. And then her second album called I Do Not Want Want What I Haven't Got had her breakout hit. And I don't know if this is her only hit. But you, you don't remember the first record? No. The Lion and the Cobra? I do not. It has your name in it. Yeah, well, I didn't know my name in 1987 was going to become that. So <laughs> You didn't call yourself the Cobra? Hey, Cobra here. Tenth grade? Yeah. He, I remember the Cobra. I remember from that first record, and I think this was around the advent of The Edge. Yes. That they, they would play the second single, the... Uh, I do know, Mandingo. I do know. I do, 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 do. Okay, all right. It's like I'm listening to Sinead O'Connor. I do know Mandingo? Mandinka. Oh. Yeah, I don't think she ever met Mandingo. We don't know. You she, don't know. You ever saw was, that movie? <laughs> she was definitely played in the early alt, early uh, college radio station. She also did a duet with The The. Kingdom of Rain. She did? That was really good. Okay. Well, this is what broke her here. It's been seven hours and 15 days. She took a print song, arranged it herself. I'm telling you, from that era, this song is on the podium for me. Oh. This song is so great, and I don't want to hear you groan because it's been overplayed. I hated this song. Since you've been gone, I can do it's not Americana. It's so slow. I can see Play a little bit of Mandinka. And maybe, maybe I... Uh, it's possible I added value to this song because it was Prince. Okay. I don't know. This is Mandingo. You got to get to the hook. Get to the chorus. God, you're <laughs> commanding. You just bailed on the other one that was at the hook. There is no hook in that. There's sort of a hook. No, there's none. I vaguely remember this. If you get to the chorus, you'll remember it. Is this the chorus? Yeah. Yeah. The ticket. God. So music sucked back then. Man, bingo. You don't remember this one? No. God, I do. You're, you're a square. It rocks. Just, no, I don't at all. I didn't like her. I'm not going to lie. But I'm sorry she passed away. <laughs> <laughs> to the family. So, so since Prince wrote it. Yeah. She got no money. Did she? She got a little bit. Did she make a ton of money off one of the most popular songs of that decade? No. I mean, that reached number one in like 50 different countries. And Prince took all the money? She couldn't afford a hairstylist. It was absolutely huge. Did that she, was her own choice. And she went on Saturday Night Live and broke the internet that didn't exist yet? So she goes on Saturday Night Live, and obviously it's in her heyday, in her shaved head days. And she gets up there and sings an a cappella version of... The song of the Bob Marley song, War. And I'm going to play the end of this because it is one of the most controversial, hot button, hot topic issues that we had back in the day. And adults, because I was not an adult back then. Right. I remember moms and dads were freaking out. And World War II people and church people, everybody was freaking out because of this moment. We have confidence in the victory of good over evil. Fight the real 
the enemy. Somebody had to be ripped. And SNL just kind of kept the camera on her for an extended period of time, too. And what she was ripping up there, she wasn't mixing a salad. She was <laughs> ripping up a picture of Pope John Paul II and saying, fight the real enemy. Everybody's favorite Pope. That's yeah. How, that's how you get canceled. And it was just like, whoa. He just ripped up the Pope on SNL. So then, I don't know... She was protesting child abuse, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, she was. To, to her credit. No <laughs> that, one likes it. That part of the story doesn't get said probably loudly enough that right. she wasn't just ripping pictures of the Pope for sport. He needed right. to be ripped. Well, yep. It's the whole Protestant Catholic thing in Ireland, I, obviously. It's, it's, so definitely, it was, it's, it's definitely a bit charged. Yeah, for sure. So that happened, and I think... I think maybe within a year, Saturday Night Live debuted what was called the Sinatra Hour or the Sinatra Group. That's what it was. And Phil, the great, the late, the great Phil Hartman. One of his best characters. Was playing Old Blue Eyes, Frank Sinatra, and he had this panel where they just discussed topics. And on the panel was Sinead O'Connor, played by J- the great Jan Hooks, uh, Sting was the musical guest, and I think the the actual guest as well, and he played Billy Idol. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Mike Myers played Steve Gourmet. That He was Steve and Steve Edie and Gourmet. Edie. Yeah, who were just there, his lap dogs. And then Chris Rock, a very young Chris Rock, was playing Luther um, uh, from NWA, Luther... Vandross. Uh, Luke Campbell. Luther Campbell, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Luke Skywalker. This is uh, how that went down. Issue number one, censorship. They got the records with the labels now. People getting arrested. What the hell's going on? Sign Aid O'Connor. <laughs> well, I think it's a bloody shame that freedom of expression... Haircut, next issue. This crap with MTV, with the nudity and all. What is this crap? Sinbad O'Connor. <laughs> Well, I think it's bloody awful, but it's typical of entertainment in a male-dominated society. Boo-hoo, you had me and then you lost me. Billy Idol. Well, I think it's great. Shut up. <laughs> Issue number three, the bald chick. What's with her head? <laughs> Let's start with a chick. What gives, cue ball? I'm looking at you, I'm thinking, 14 in the side pocket. <laughs> you know, I... I can't believe you're talking about my hair with all the bloody starvation and the suffering in the world right now. Come on, swing, baby, you platinum. Billy Idol. You all think she's really quite attractive, actually. Check his papers. Luther Campbell. You watch it, mate. All right, what about the chick's head, Luther? Well, be honest, man, I don't care about the head. I, I like the butt. <laughs> I hear you, baby, loud and clear. Forget the head. Put a bag over it and do your business. <laughs> well, am I right, Stephen Eady? You bet, Frank. You know it, Chairman. <laughs> Issue number four, Millie Vanilli. What is this <laughs> crap? <laughs> Uncle Phil. All right. What was beeped was the F word, but the gay F word, and the long version of it. The British cigarette. The one with the T on the end. I could not... EA and I were in there listening to this, and it, like... Because EA comes from a different generation. Right. And did that not freak you out when you heard that? When I heard that, I was like, what what are you watching? Is this, like, some hardcore podcast or something? I could not... (laughs) Imagine that was SNL saying that. It's Corby and his hardcore podcast, right? For sure. So, uh, yeah, once ah. again. Crap. <laughs> Uncle Festa. <laughs> I don't understand the question. <laughs> okay, so. Uncle Festa. <laughs> Uncle Festa. <laughs> Man, I got one more thing about Sinead before we vote. Go on. One of the coolest moments in UFC history was her singing the walkout for Conor McGregor in, like, 2015, UFC, uh, UFC really? 189. So the whole arena's dark, and it's it's the walkout, and I'm sure you can find it online. 
but she is singing uh, some Irish tune called Foggy Dew, and it's real haunting, and it's dark, and it's just a spotlight on her and, and Connor walking out. And, dude, it's pretty haunting. It's hair on your arm standing up. It's It was primal. It was awesome. Well, she checks out, and I'm expecting the worst of news. Now, she came out in about 20, 2007 and talked about her mental issues and said she suffers from three different mental um, maladies, if you will. Really? And her son recently took his own life at the age of 17, Yes. Right? Oh, and, boy. Yeah, and her last Twitter post was about moms who deal with suicide, suicidal really? kids. Oh, yeah, dude. No. It's, so I fear the absolute worst because she was only 56 years old, and she was kind of bouncing around, you know, doing a little bit of touring here and there, was going to release a record, and so... Dude... Okay, just an aside. Yeah. Is it a little weird that Dolores from the Cranberries and her have such parallels, including a very young death, early yeah. year, early death, but very similar vocal qualities? Absolutely. If, if somebody would have said Sinead O'Connor sang Zombie from the Cranberries, you would say, you would believe yeah. I believe that. Yeah. A very. Uh, they both have that lilt in their voice. Yeah, and they're both dead in their Early to mid fifties, yeah, right? Fifty something Man, like that. What a bummer! Yeah, I know. Two contributors. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I think she's kind of a no brainer. Yeah, she's absolutely. In. Well, we got to start in the ticker room. That's right, Ty. Oh, I definitely put Sinbad O'Connor in for sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, according to Mino, who's out today, room two hundred seven is Alan Arkin, David Kunkel, the chief, the number one cop. Oh wow, I missed that. And now Sinead O'Connor. Well, we didn't get Ham and EA's vote. Well, they don't. We already it's we already four have four. To, yeah, so but e- they they don't get to do a courtesy vote. All right, EA, is she in or no? She's not. <laughs> what is she, Michael Jordan? Now, uh, Ham? Obviously, no. She stole her best work from Prince and Phil Hartman for crying out loud. See? Yeah. See? It's like, what are we doing? We don't know. We don't know, but in, she's in. in. Alan Arkin, David Conkle, and now Sinead <laughs> O'Connor. What in. a weird trifecta that is. Get the Steak Podcast at patreon.com slash sportsgreek. And here he is, David. Gen X David. Well, as we covered during... What's up, Dave? Thank you. As we covered during trifecta talk, Sinead O'Connor, the Irish treasure has passed away at the age of 56? Yep. 56. And during Trifecta Talk, it was brought up by Bob, who has UFC bloodlust. Yes. That uh, Conor McGregor was very tight with Sinead O'Connor as they were countrymen together. Yeah. Country people. Sinead O'Connor McGregor. Yes. (laughs) And so he has released a statement. He said, the world has lost a beautiful voice and an even more beautiful person. I'm honored to have known her, to have played her music both in and out of the octagon. God rest, God rest Sinead. And then he said, I- Ireland has lost an iconic voice and one of our absolute finest. And you mentioned the Foggy Dew play out. Yes. And so that was in uh, July of 2015. It was UFC 189 in Vegas. And did you watch this live? Oh, yeah. You paid for this one? Of course, I haven't missed a UFC pay-per-view in about 20 years, Dave. No, 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 wait. wait. If you're asking, did I pay for it, I don't like the tone of your voice. He didn't pay for it. I did. That was long before I had a sugar daddy. (laughs) Well, uh, this is considered one of the finest entrances in UFC history. There's no question. Hands down the glass. The whole arena's dark. Yep, she's just in spotlight. Fog rising behind her. So good. And I think they they keep Connor back until just the right time. And then his walkout. I think he's draped in the Irish flag, maybe. Didn't sound as loud to tell, but the angel spells 
The podium she's standing on is glowing green. And keep in mind, half of Ireland shows up in Vegas for those fights with Connor, at least in his heyday. Yeah. The bravest Shut up. <laughs> she eating Lucky Charms. We still have not seen Connor. I don't know if we're going to get there. Yeah, it takes She's like an hour. in a pot of gold. Yeah, song's too long. Yeah, she bring a pot of gold out, too? <laughs> She's she 56 and gorgeous. Well, she's 56 and dead, Daddy. Mm. Um, also in the UK today, Kevin Spacey, on his birthday, oh boy, was ah. acquitted of nine counts of sexual assault in a UK court. Way to go, Snake. I didn't do anything. So it was his 64th birthday, and he was cleared of all charges. The jury... What's going on? I think I just need to... Uh, the Fast and the Furious silence. out there? I need to silence whatever is happening after uh, Conor McGregor. <laughs> um, yeah, so it took uh, the jury 12 hours over two and a half days of deliberation. And what was weird is after the conclusion of the trial, five of the jurors waited outside the courthouse to see if they could meet him. Oh, okay. Oh, dear. Dude, how OJ jury is this? Right? This is ridiculous. But uh, he was accused by four different men, I believe, and... Uh, and this is all when he was working in London at the Old Vic Theatre in the early 2000s of uh, being overly aggressive, grabbing their wieners and uh, Whoa. trying to uh, get them to uh, do things that they weren't necessarily ready to do with a famous actor. And this is separate from allegations that have been made against him in the U.S. This was strictly U.K., right? Right, yes. This was just uh, stuff that happened in the U.K. He did win that $40 million civil lawsuit from Anthony Rapp back in October that was over here in, in New York. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he uh, broke down in tears and, uh, and thanked the jury and the court and uh, said, I imagine many of you can understand that there are, uh, uh, that's a, a lot for me to process, but I'd like to say I'm enormously grateful to the jury for having taken to the, t the time to examine all the evidence before reaching a decision, and I'm humbled by the outcome today. All right, so Kevin Spacey, tremendous actor, Oscar winner, I believe. I don't know if he won, but he was certainly nominated. Um, all this comes down like in the last decade. Is he unhirable now? Well, I did see, and I don't know what the project was, but there was a, a public statement by a director who had cast Kevin Spacey before the trial and was vindicate, said he was vindicated by this and was glad that his project could move forward. I don't know what that project was. All right, so you know, maybe on a technicality he's getting away with this type of stuff, but nobody doubts the creepiness level of him. And yeah. It's off the flipping charts. Yeah, he is he is at the very least creepy and predatory, yes. if not criminal. Right. Right. And yeah. that would seem to be enough. I mean, maybe he's learned to tone it down. Well, maybe now, but I mean, imagine And he's 64. Does he still have the same libido at 64 that he did at 50? Yes, those guys There's no doubt. It oh. never ends. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> it never ends. Uh, we have an update on the saga of Jason Aldean and try that in a small town. All right. So we talked about yesterday how it's the biggest hit of his career, and it debuted uh, this past week at number two on the Billboard charts. And uh, smashed Even though it was released as a single in, like, May. Yeah, but it, it only became part of the public consciousness when the video came out. The video came out, like, a week and a half ago. Yeah. And... As you may remember, the video shows he and his band performing on the steps of a courthouse <laughs> where an actual lynching occurred yeah. about 100 years ago. Whoa. And uh, it's intercut with uh, protests. And so they quietly released a new cut of the video that has taken six seconds of BLM protests out. Now... It's debatable as to whether or not this is due to the pressure of uh, the woke left or it's due to 
them not getting proper permission from the uh, Fox affiliate where the footage was taken from because it's newsreel footage okay. with, with like a Chiron graphic, you know, of Black Lives Matter protest turns violent or whatever. Um, so they took that six seconds out and tried to just slide that by everybody, but now everybody's taking notice. Yeah, yeah. so you get it from both sides. Yeah, you can't win. Or you gave in, or well, and plus you're just you're stoking the fire of of uh, publicity too. It's just it's not going to end. Yeah, at this at this point, it, it it's like Jerry always says that any publicity is good publicity. Yeah, that when it comes to selling records or selling Cowboys tickets, that as long as your name is out there, there are going to be people that will take interest and support you. Yeah. Um. Speaking of support, Barbie smashed another record as it made twenty six million smashed. on Tuesday. Dude, it made more on Tuesday than it did on Monday. Uh, well, I think uh, right Monday was Monday was twenty six point one. Tuesday was twenty six even. That is un in decline. So, Believable. So it has crossed two hundred million in five days. It's at two hundred fourteen point one million domestic. I'm still holding out. Do you have no desire because it's called Barbie? China. I don't like how you're uh, framing that question because well, I see where you're going. Do you think that you're going to just get a smoothed over Ken bump if you go see this? Yeah, Bob's going to be a smoothie now. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be a smoothie. <laughs> I don't think that would have that sort yeah, of they, they, effect on me. They, they don't have like a, a, uh, a funnel that takes all the men as they're leaving Barbie and turns them into smoothies. Yeah. I uh, I have no one in my house campaigning uh, that I go. My wife went on her own, I believe. And uh, I don't care. There's nothing you about just don't the like, movie. That... You just don't like cinema. Me? Uh, yeah, probably. I, I can't wait to go see Oppenheimer. Okay. Well, speaking of Oppenheimer. Well, I can wait, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> It has grossed uh, another twelve million on Tuesday, and it has crossed the hundred million threshold, so one hundred and seven point one million for Oppenheimer. And we've talked about that the the way that it is intended to be seen is on film in IMAX. Right. So the seventy millimeter IMAX print, and there are only what eighteen IMAX film. Theaters in the United States. One of them is at Webb Chapel and 635 Which here in Dallas. Seems like a very small number. Yeah, uh, most IMAX uh, theaters these days are digital projection. Hey guys, but IMAX. Christopher <laughs> Christopher <laughs> Nolan wants you to see it on film, and I saw it in 70 millimeter, but it was non IMAX. But I did enjoy the grain of the film, the color of the film. It just it had a warmth that digital projection doesn't have. It's very similar to the CD versus vinyl sure. argument, or whatever, yeah. streaming versus vinyl. Um, so there have been some listings on Craigslist and also on eBay, people buying IMAX seventy millimeter film tickets and then trying to flip them. And on Monday. Uh, there was a, a post that went viral, somebody trying to sell tickets to an IMAX showing in Midtown Manhattan on the fourth row, perfect center, for $1,400. Come on. What is going on? Who would do that? Well, it's because when because there's only 18 of these theaters. Yeah, but... And they are... If you try to go to a showing at that Web Chapel here in Dallas, it's sold out for a month. And, really? And they have added... You know, it's a three-hour movie, as, yeah. we've, as we've talked about, and they've added at, at this Web Chapel, and I'm sure many of these other IMAX uh, film theaters, they've added a 2.30 showing and a 6.30 a.m. showing. So it's basically playing around the clock. And you're telling me the 6.30 a.m.s are sold out? Yes. Because people want to see it. Because I could see doing that. People want to see yeah, it so could. bad. Odds of me falling asleep in a 6.30 a.m. movie are <laughs> drastically reduced. Yeah, so I, I think you need to keep your... Uh, I mean, that's not too far from Capel either. No, it's not. So I think that's that needs to be your mission, is to try and see it in IMAX. I would rather watch it on my phone than deal with then that. Then go to 6.30 a.m. showing? Yeah. 
Come on, man. 6.30 a.m. or pay $1,400. I will watch it on my phone. I'll bring McMuffins. On a when, small iPhone. When are you guys going to commit to seeing it, and when are we going to have the hardline review? I'm going tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I'm not. When are you going to see have it? I Greta Van Fleet tomorrow. No, I'm going or in the morning. Or Fred Van Fleet tomorrow. Fred Van sure. Fleet. I'm going in the morning. Tonight, Not six thirty a.m., but like ten o'clock or something like that. I have plans in California to see it. Okay, so sometime, they have theaters out there. Sometime right? next week, we will talk Oppenheimer. Okay, I'd love to. Okay, and Rhett Miller will join us, and that's your emails. All right, ladies and gentlemen, from the happiest hour. Have you ever, has he ever done community quick hits from the happiest hour? I don't think so, Dave. It Go is Dave. a first time, and uh, this is the first time that we've ever covered Mitch McConnell on community quick hits. Big it's story. not necessarily... He's in a community. It's not necessarily our local community. It is our national community. And it is, outside of the Sinead O'Connor uh, unexpected death, it is the story of the day. As this morning, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell was uh, doing a presser, a weekly Republican leadership news conference in Washington. Fake. And he was making some remarks about uh, defense policy bills when he suddenly stopped talking and was silent for nearly 20 seconds. This is like the Texas Ranger Roger Moray catatonic stance that, or uh, state that he went into in the clubhouse in the 70s. Bringing yes. it back to sports. Thank you. So Ham has the audio back there. We'll look at the video. Go ahead and play it now. Yeah. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're on a path to finishing the NDA uh, this week. It's been good bipartisan cooperation and a string of uh, and then he just seems to be able to not articulate any words or make any sounds, and then he closes his mouth as the camera zooms in on him and he just has a blank stare meanwhile Dude, all the people so behind weird. him all his colleagues all his colleagues are kind of waiting for him to pick back up and then they are checking on him like whispering in his ear like you okay and so they take him off to regroup and then he later comes back to complete his statement and he was asked at that time are you okay? Are you able to do your job? I have, the, I have the follow-up here, and yeah. He's, and he said, I'm fine. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Could you address what happened at the start of the press conference? And was it related to your injury from earlier this year where you suffered a concussion? Is that... No, I'm, I'm fine. You're, you're fine? You're fully able to yeah. do your job? Yeah. Mr. Lear, can I just get your... Well, I mean, it, 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 uh, he's 81. Yeah. And he did have... The fall earlier this year in which he suffered a concussion and a lot of lacerations on his face. So whether it's post-concussion or it looked eerily like a stroke, like, I mean... Yeah, I don't... don't, Either way, you know, it's really weird seeing a dude up there with cameras in his face go through something like that. And then the people behind him, or I don't even know who they are, people that work with him. Why don't they... (laughs) Yeah, I know. But why don't they... Why did anybody go up there? Like, they just let him sit there and stare like a... Well, a part zombie. of it is, like, you know, respect in terms of uh, this is a very important man at a very important position we are here to support. And, uh, and, and you know, oftentimes these are contentious issues he's speaking on, and we just have to uh, show a force. And so, he stood there for, like, 15 seconds and no but one... But they're all thinking... I, I can't undercut him. I'm, you know, I'm right. I I'm, mean, maybe he's thinking of what he wants to say next. They don't want to make him look old. Yeah, they don't want to clown him in front of the cameras. So, yeah, on either side, he had Senator John Barrasso of Wyoming. And then on the other side, he had Joni Ernst of Iowa. And they are the two that ended up grabbing him by either arm and leading him off. So scary, Man. scary moment I, for Mitch McConnell. Can I do a let, let me say this? Go on. Let me say this. In the private sector, running your own business, maybe even owning your own football team, I don't have any issues with age maximums. But, man, when you are 
serving in a in a elected official spot, or even worse, if you are a Supreme Court justice. Yeah. And we all understand the human condition. We all have parents, grandparents. We've seen and can say with great certainty that aging diminishes us. At a certain point, you can't do what you once did. And this charade we have in our government and in many places, but definitely our government and into the Supreme Court where if you are breathing, you can serve at an elite level and make highly, highly important, world-changing decisions at the at the blink of an eye. And we just... And this is both parties, this is both genders, this is both everything. I don't know where the number is. 75. I think it's probably about 75. Do you think you're real open to new ideas when you're 81? My God, dude. No, I don't. And I just I just don't think it serves us well. And I think it's a topic no one wants to talk about because it's really awkward and it affects us but all. But it's not because why do we have, what you know, when the, uh, the, the founding fathers stuck 35 in there for a minimum age for the presidency. Yes. Well, that's in there for a reason. Even though back then, the <laughs> l- average lifespan was yeah. like forty-five. And, yep. and I, yeah, I, they I, definitely didn't count on Biden being what? What is he? Eighty-three now? Yeah, and, and he's like he's running for re-election, like without anybody asking any questions and without anybody re- really allowed to say anything because it's too awkward. And he's running against a guy who's nearly eighty. And this and is so just, he is eighty. Sorry, not eighty-three. But 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 he'll be eighty one in November. Yeah, and if he finishes his term, he'd be like eighty six or something crazy like that. And Trump will be in his eighties, and and McConnell's in his eighties, and just nobody. What are they doing? Why don't these people retire? And because I, money and power is too good. I just don't understand. I'll never understand it. Well, whatever their never. personal motivations are, that's fine. But you can't do the job at the same level. What is asked of those guys is. Like an, if an NFL coach was deciding world issues 12 months a year, like the schedule we ask of these guys is insane for a 55-year-old, let alone an 85-year-old, and, and, and nobody asks questions. Like, it's totally normal. And, like, you know, having been through this with my parents here in the last five years, 80, 80 is the line of demarcation. That is it. That is when everything, all bets are off. With Things the human go downhill team. fast after 80. Well, they can't. That, yeah. That's always that number, though. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you you know hit the lottery and you're fine for another 10 years. But that's it. That's when things, I've seen it with my friends' parents. I've seen it a million, 80. That's it. And so I think 75 should be it. I think 75 should be as long as you're able to serve. I, I totally think that's true as well. And like I said, in the private sector, do whatever you want. But, man, in these very important, world-changing positions, it seems crazy. And, dude, take an 85-year-old on a week vacation with you and your family and just be like, well, we got to we got to make sure we oh, slow yeah. down and pick activities that they're comfortable with. And it's fine. It's okay to be mortal. Right. But what are we doing as a... As a society where we're just like, oh, yeah, of course. And here this poor son of a bitch is out there in front of the world trying to get his message across, and he's got he's in a catatonic state over a stroke. Or, he should be on a porch whatever. with a lemonade celebrating a full life of service. I know, I know. It's terrible. It's absolutely awful. Well, to change yeah. the subject and to bring it back to our local, hyper-local community, in Dallas, Dallas police for the second time in two days, have had to shoot a suspect. We had the story yesterday of the runaway U-Haul that actually was witnessed live and in person by Jubb as he was on his way to Love Field to go to Oxnard. Yeah. That uh, Dallas police ended up exchanging gunfire with that suspect and ended up hitting him in the leg and he was taken to the hospital. Well, we had another incident yesterday uh, that made news today as uh in cedar hill so this is actually cedar hill police and not dallas police uh but there was a a gunman who shot a doctor at a medical facility that was his ex-girlfriend's workplace and it was called a planned attack oh my god so the suspect is a 34 year old guy brian mcgee of glenn heights 
and so he's in critical condition. Uh, but evidently that there were calls of an active shooter uh, just after noon yesterday at Methodist Family Health Center in Cedar Hill on Beltline Road. And they found a gunshot victim who was a physician on the ground. And then there was an officer who saw a man with a long gun driving away in a black four-door Chrysler. So then they pursued him, uh, and they were able to apprehend him. It shows that uh, uh, an officer was crouching behind the police vehicle uh, on a median, and the officer shouts, shots fired, and then they ended up uh, being able to see the suspect in the back of his car shooting back at them. Uh, so he walked in the facility, took a shot at a doctor, yes. and then left? Yes. So he, that was his intended victim? Not sure. We don't know if uh, he knew the victim, if that was his intended victim, but they're saying it was a premeditated intended attack. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the ex-girlfriend works at that medical facility. Dang. And she was at the location, so maybe he was there to shoot her. And this other doctor intervened. Um, there, he was making threats against her recently. Uh, so he is currently in, uh, as I said, intensive care. Uh, and so we won't get more details or a statement from him until uh, he's upgraded out of ICU. But well, he needs to go away forever. Yeah, that's a, a wild story out of Cedar Hill. And that's your community quick hits and, on and, a Wednesday. And